Welcome everybody to the Zoning, Abe Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, uh, Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. My name is Brian Riddell. I'll, I'll be acting as chair tonight. Uh, also, we have uh, board member Charlie O'Brien, board member Russell Chen, board member John Himmel, and board member Jeff Frankel uh, joining us tonight. Um, we have uh, what everybody can see, a pretty uh, packed house and busy agenda. So. Um, we will try to get through these um, as efficiently as we possibly can, but we ask everybody to um, stay muted and when you need to speak, if you could raise your hand um, or what is it, Jonathan Starr? Yep, so the virtual hand raise is found under your reactions buttons if you're on a, a laptop, if you're uh, on a phone, on a dial-in phone, you can do the star nine if you want to go ahead and just try to test that out real quick so that everybody becomes familiar with it. Worst case, just turn on your video, give us a big wave, or send one of the hosts a chat. The chat has been disabled. It is only towards the hosts, uh, just so we're not disrupting the meeting. We can keep this moving as uh, quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. O'Brien, could I have a motion to waive the uh, reading from the previous meeting? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to have a motion to re, re, excuse me to waive the minutes of the meeting of November 30th. Was that right? 23rd. 23rd. Second. Do you need a roll call vote, Maureen? Um, no, no, for the minutes. All right. That's fine. Thank All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. On to our first agenda item that'll be old. <laughs> It's ZBA 2179. Mr. Right. So who, who's uh, the, uh, is it Mr. Fleming? Edward yep. Fleming? It's mm -hmm. Ed. Yep. Uh, uh, thank, Fleming. You. thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Riddell. Uh, I, I believe that uh, my brother Rob is here on a matter that's simply being continued. I'm not sure if the board wants to uh, act on that. Um, I appreciate that. So I should have started yeah. with that. Thank you. No problem. Working through some transitional uh, moves here because uh, our dear chairman is on vacation. <laughs> uh, so actually first, uh, so we have two cases that are going to move tonight. First is ZBA 2177 for Susan Cochran for a variance to subdivide her property from uh, 90, at 94 Marymount, Ave, Marymount Road in Quincy. Uh, the applicant has requested a continuance to let her architect uh, finish the uh, design phase of the second structure. So uh, what, what did we say for today? January 25th on that, Charlie. Okay, Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 21-77, Susan Cochran for a variance to subdivide the property and create a new buildable lot for a residential structure on the premises numbered 94 Marymount Road. I make a, a motion to reschedule the hearing until January 25th of 2022. Thank you. All those in favor? Do you need a roll? Uh, I need a roll call. So. Charlie O'Brien? Yes, ma'am. Russell Chin? Yes. John Himmel? He said yes. Jeff Frankel? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. And uh, Attorney Fleming, you for 2189? Bob? Uh, here for uh, 12 Adeline. 12 Adeline, yep. 12 Adeline, yeah. Thank, thank you to Edward Fleming, too. He usually doesn't <laughs> let me do that. Go before. Him. That's <laughs> so much, very surprising. How much time you need? Um, I don't need any time, really. I, you know, we had, we had attempted through Councilor McCarthy to schedule a neighborhooding a while back. It became very difficult and problematic, so we weren't able to do that. Um, uh, Councillor McCarthy, I've been speaking to the last couple of days uh, because he's gotten some calls from some neighbors just with questions and things of that nature. We'd like to have a neighborhood meeting before we move forward and present this particular matter before this board. So okay. I'm, I'm respectfully requesting that we continue to matter to, I think, the second hearing in January, if that's possible. Is that, yep. Did, is that the 25th? Then? That's the 25th. 25th. Okay. And that's enough time for you to get the, the meeting scheduled? I, I believe so. I, I believe so. I think we should be able to get it in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Charlie, okay. that was uh, 189 for January 25th. 
Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 21-89, Alfred Petchy for a finding variance to subdivide the lot into two parcels and construct a two-family residence on the newly created lot while maintaining the existing single-family home on the premises 12 Adeline Place. I make a motion to reschedule that until February, until um, January 25th of 2022. Second. Roll call. Kelly O'Brien? Yes. Yeah. Russell Chin? Yes. Ron Himmel? Jeff Frankel? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Mm-hmm. And John, I don't think your mic is working or something just for future. Add some volume. Great. Th- thank you so much and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Back. Anyway, to- we can make Rob's life easier. You know, that's why I'm here. Just saving people money, Attorney Fleming. Just saving there people. There you go. Um, back to uh, old business. Uh, ZBA 2179-149 Quincy Street, LLC for a variant special permit floodplain. Uh, Attorney Fleming, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. This is a continuation of a matter that, um, that you heard just uh, a month or so ago, uh, whereby we presented a four unit townhouse uh, um, residential proposal for the site. Um, there were questions raised, I know, by um, uh, uh, mem- many of the members here tonight uh, requesting that we consider uh, reducing the size of the development from four units to three units. Uh, we've done so here. I'd like to give uh, Brian Donahue, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, an opportunity just to show the plans real quick and uh, walk through it, and we'll be uh, very, very brief. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Is it possible to share my screen? Yeah, just give us a second here. Yeah. Yeah, you should be all set to share it. Perfect. Everyone see that? Yep. Great. Um, as a Councilor Fleming um, uh, reminded everyone last time, we had a four-unit building stretching the length of this uh, of this property. So uh, going back to the drawing board, we've reduced the number of units to three, and um, in doing so, we've provided uh, some more landscape area, more area for snow storage less paving so we think it's a it's a better proposal and um i can just review it with you briefly the the proposed architectural site plan is on the right so you can see at the end of the drive we have limited any vegetation there to a lawn so we've got sufficient area what is sufficient area to to, uh, stockpile snow that's plot up the driveway we've created a little walking path for for pets and so forth and um, I have a rendering of this view um, down below, which I'll show you a little bit later. But in general, it, it's shortened the building from 98 feet to 78 feet. So we've taken 20 feet off the length. Um, in, in doing the, the downsizing of the units, we've added to get a little bit more square footage and make it a little bit more economically feasible for the sale of these units. We've added a couple of feet to the length, but we've, we've uh, taken a unit off. So it's gone from that 98 to 78 feet in length. We have not changed the, the width of the building. We need the, the drive aisles and we need the back out space to get into the parking garage. On the right side, which I believe is in the north, um, behind the building, we, we've just mm-hmm. planned on landscaping that with gravel and some pads for uh, condensing units for the, for the apartments for the condominium. Again, we have a six foot fence circumnavigating the whole site to the front and then for the 14 feet between the building and the, prop- and the, and the property line, we'll be dropping that fence down the feet. And again, we've minimized any landscaping. There seem to be a, a lot of comments regarding that. So we've also minimized the landscaping um, um, in this revised site plan. So you can see the comparison between where the building sits where the existing house sits. So we're actually at 14 feet off Quincy Street, which is the dimension that is presently to the existing porch of the existing residence. Um, so this, we went through the, the, the plans for the units haven't changed other than the fact that they're a little bit larger, 
two feet in the length direction. So they're 26 as opposed to 24 feet in length. We still have a two-car two car parking garage underneath each unit. Second floor is living space, kitchen, and uh, still two bedrooms. We've, we've not increased the bedroom count at all. So we've got just more generous, better better layouts for these particular, for these particular units. Um, and then I think the, the last sheets here, this, the one, the drawing on the top shows a, a view from the side yard looking at the front of the building and the uh, landscaped areas in the rear. Uh, as you can see by the other two renderings, we've got a fence, a six foot fence that wraps around the whole property. So other than that, the design hasn't changed. The aesthetic is still the same, simply um, put. And then we've just obviously re removed that last fourth unit. So that's really Thank all you. I'd like to say about this. And if anybody has any questions, Thank you, Brian. And um, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, Jim Burke's also here. He doesn't need to make a presentation, but this, if there's any questions about drainage, I know uh, some uh, you know members may have questions. Jim's here to answer any questions that the board may have. But that's our presentation for tonight. I believe uh, there was over generally um, support for the proposal, uh, but concern about the density. And um, in fact, the only neighbor that spoke um, was actually in favor of the development and thought this would be a great improvement to the neighborhood. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I you know, remember uh, it wasn't that long ago. So I right. do remember that, that that was a situation and it looks like, you know, you did exactly what uh, the board members asked for, which is, you know, reduce the density of the project. So, uh, you know, that being said, I'm in favor. I, Mr. O'Brien, any questions? Yeah, no, I think they comply with what we were looking for. That was that seems to be what I was looking for. So I'm I'm content. Great. Mr. Chen. Yep, I, I agree with um, what's been said so far, and I I would uh, approve of this plan. Mr. Hamill. <laughs> Still not getting anything from you. Are you on mute on your phone? He's unmuted on Jonathan's eyes. It just me here. Yeah, he can hear us. Jonathan said I just needed him. To oh, well. yeah. Um, oh, was he okay. called in on his phone as well? Yeah. Okay, so that's his hand up. I just sent the thing to unmute him. Then. Did you call in on your cell phone as well, the 4799? Just give me a head shake. 84799, yes. Right, try to unmute it. I've been sending the request. There it is. There you go. There you go, John. Nope. <laughs> You're coming in all broke up. I can't understand anything you people are saying. Oh, that's not the right person. <laughs> <laughs> John sounds much different. Uh, um, all right, Mr. Frankel. I'm in favor. All right, Charlie, want to make a motion? Okay. Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 21-79, 20, uh, 149 Quincy Street, LLC, for a variance special permit floodplain to remove the existing single family home and construct three new townhouses on the premises numbered 149 Quincy Street, I make a motion to grant the requested variant special permit and floodplain. Second. Mr. Chairman, uh, point of procedure, was there a request for any opposition to be heard? So we did hear testimony the last time, so there, there doesn't need to be Russell. There's none today. Okay, thank you. Second the motion. All right, roll call. Yes. Kelly O'Brien? Yes, sir. Russell Chin? Yes, in favor. John Himmel? <laughs> Rick Franco? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Thank you. I think John needs a ride. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we want to try and solve Mr. Himmel's voice? Did John, do you have, did you call in as well, John? Just told him to Is he using a flip phone? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. John, is it on your end? John, can you look at the screen? On your end, does it say you're muted? No. Okay. You may have your microphone on your actual laptop or desktop, wherever you're working on, might be off. If that's not the case, you might have to log out and log back in. I think something could be hung up on your Zoom. Or you can call in. You can phone it in. Too. Right. Well, he was unmuted on there, so he yeah. should be. Okay, going to try and get back in. Yeah. We'll just give it a minute here, guys. Yeah, I've been told all Zoom issues will be sorted out in 2022. So. <laughs> I'll tell you, you come a long way. I mean, you're coming with this Zoom meeting. Yeah. He's got that hand raised thing figured out. Uh, that's No, that's not him, though. That's another person. I think they had a question about this. I don't know if you want to talk to them or not. Recording stopped. What's what's the MC's laptop? So that's who he's is. What's 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 his phone number that he's calling in on? But he's MC's new laptop. He must be. Okay. If he is, I'll um, you'd see if that's them now. They just got into the. Let me give you the phone. Number. It's four digits. Is that John, so can you unmute 7981, the last four digits, 7981? That should be John's phone. All right, just did. It's the last person there, I see. Okay, can you hear me now? Hey, all right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Recording for your in progress. Hey, John, just you're going to have to turn down the volume on your computer. Or else you're going to get. Yeah. All set. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on. Old business. Uh, case number ZBA 21 75 JVC C Street LLC for a variance to demolish the existing building and construct a 24 unit. Residential building with parking under on the premises numbered 105 C Street, Quincy, is the applicant or their representative here. Can we, uh, on John, can we unmute uh, Chris Timmons? Good evening, Chairman Riddell and board members. For the record, Christopher Carroll, I'm the attorney for the applicant. In the spirit of your uh, intensive schedule tonight, I'd like to introduce Chris Timmons, who will then proceed with his presentation, and then we'll bring in our other team members to address the application. So with that, I'd like to introduce Chris Timmons, a partner in the development team. Uh, good evening, Chairman Radell, members of the zoning board. Uh, Mr. Timmons, may I take your oath, please? Uh, yes. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Thank you. Um, well, I'm happy to finally appear before you guys this evening with our project team. 
to present our revised plans for the residential project at 105 C Street. Uh, we began working on this project on March 11th of this year after reaching out to uh, Planning Director Jim Fatsies. He told us to contact our ward counselor and I uh, spoke with Mr. McCarthy two days later. Uh, over the next four months, I had three Zoom meetings with our architect, Mr. Fatsies, Mr. Stevens, and Mr. King of the planning department, during which our proposal was reviewed and revised. Um, additionally, we've had two community meetings and direct outreach to some of our closest abutters during this process. We've received a lot of excellent feedback and discussed a lot of concerns such as height, parking, transportation issues, safety, and exterior design. Uh, the project has undergone positive changes based off of this feedback. We've also heard broader concerns out of our immediate control, uh, including school impacts, overdevelopment concerns, and other general issues, which unfortunately seem to be driven by a couple of folks leveraging these issues to rally opposition without accurately or honestly representing the facts about the project proposal. Uh, tonight, we have an opportunity to share a project which has really evolved through the work with the planning department and those neighbors offering honest criticisms. Uh, some of the changes that include reduction of the building height to three stories, reduction of our unit count to 20 units, improvement in the parking ratio. We now have 42 spaces with two additional visitor spaces. Um, we've improved the front yard setback to maintain clear line of sight along C Street. Uh, site logistics considerations, including truck loading area and elimination of the second curb cut that is within yards of our neighbor, the Fox and Hound. Um, I'm joined by our architect, Tim Johnson, Jack Gillen, our transportation engineer. He's prepared and filed a traffic impact assessment with the city. And obviously Chris Carroll next to me, who's the attorney for the project. Um, our site and civil plans were prepared by uh, Jim Burke from DeSalle Burke. Um, but now I'll pass it on to Tim Johnson, who will present our, uh, our plans. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I share my screen? Sure. Mr. Johnson, may I take you off before you begin? Mr. Johnson, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now we're hearing? I do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Don, you got that? Yep, there. Awesome, can do it. Perfect. Well, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, uh, Tim Johnson, architect uh, for the project. Uh, as Chris Timmons, my client mentioned, uh, this 0 0.6 acre site is located in a residential subdistrict, multifamily. Multifamily isn't allowed use. Our plan is to demolish the existing building and erect a new three story 20 unit residential building with garage and grade parking. Abutting the site, which is in blue, abutting the site to the north is a local restaurant. Abutting the site to the south is a government, federal government facility. And across the street from the site is the Mount Wollaston Cemetery. We are planning on using one of the existing curb cuts uh, of this former 300 seat restaurant that will be demolished uh, and provide a delivery and visitor parking area at the front of the site and a surface parking dumpster and fire truck turnaround area at the rear of the site. I will go through the uh, unit breakdown. This is a, a view from the rear of the bu building looking northwest. The garage, which is below grade, as I mentioned, is a 34 car garage with bike parking. The other eight parking spaces are at grade in the rear. Of the 20 units, six will be one bedroom units at 700 square feet average. Then there'll be 14 two bedroom units at 1300 square foot average. All units will have exterior decks. 
photos of the existing site showing the existing building, the old Chinese restaurant. And the zoning relief required for the project. As I mentioned, this is in the residential B subdistrict. Multifamilies aren't allowed use. Uh, minimum lot size, 6750. We're at 27,597 square feet. The items that have a check mark are sections of the zoning code we are seeking relief. The minimum lot area per dwelling units required is 4,500. We're at 1,380 square feet per unit. We do meet the minimum lot width and frontage. The floor area ratio, which is of course the relationship of the living area to the size of the lot. We have a multiplier of 0.5 required and we're proposing a 1.0. Uh, maximum height and stories, we, three stories, 35 feet. We do meet the three stories and 35 feet. Green space per dwelling unit, 1,000 square foot per unit. We are at 300 square foot per unit. Front yard, side and rear yard are all 25 feet required. Front yard, we're at 19, which as I'll show you shortly, we do not encroach further into the yard as did the former Chinese restaurant. The side yards on the left side, looking at the building from the street, we have nine feet to the stair tower, and then we have 13 feet to the face of the building. The right side of the site, we have a tw the required 25 foot setback. And then the rear yard is a 58 foot setback. We do meet the required parking. We are providing 42 spaces plus two visitor parking spaces. And finally, I'll go over the uh, green aspects of the project quickly. Uh, of course, in the city of Quincy, we build to the stretch energy code, which is 20% more energy efficient than current code. Uh, we do follow the uh, water sense federal guidelines on uh, water fixtures, 20% more water efficient. We have uh, electric electrification of the building uh, as, much as, as much as possible, which the uh, street utility will allow. Of course, the space on the roof for solar panels, approximately a 18 kilowatt system. And we are also providing trash compactors in each of the units. Of course, that will minimize the amount or increase the amount of garbage that we can put in the dumpsters um, and also um, uh, the amount of uh, deliveries by a dump uh, or pickups by dump, dump trucks will be reduced. And finally, uh, we follow the Dark Sky Initiative. All exterior lighting will be downlit and shielded. We'll be using warm white LED light bulbs. So this will minimize light pollution to the cemetery across the street and to our budding properties. And that's a quick overview of the project, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to hand it off now to our traffic engineer, John Gillen. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Can I just take a moment here? Just, uh, I know this is probably many people's first time attending uh, not only a zoning board session on a, on a Zoom meeting, but also even uh, maybe in person. Um, we save all uh, time for um, response um, for after uh, the, the applicant's presentation. And also any, any communication that's done via chat will not be entered into the record. It's, it, it's not an official record. So um, I, I see a number of people reaching out via the chat feature that are coming to me. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that there, it's just not, it's not an official record take. So we'll be, we'll be calling for uh, your testimony uh, during the meeting uh, at a later time. So I thank you, but just, you, you don't need to keep sending messages. All right. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Johnson. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to hand it off to our traffic engineer, Jack Gillen. Thank you. Russell, if you can swear in Mr. Gillum as well. Yes, Mr. Gillum, uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to keep sharing the screen. That's fine. I have no problem with that. It's up to yourself. But if you, 
if you want to, sh if you have data that you want to share, we can absolutely put it up there. No, I, 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 I don't need to put the traffic report up on the, that'll probably confuse more people than not, than help. But okay. uh, I did the normal traffic uh, study that's uh, uh, in the department of what industry standards, what MassDOT looks for, what people looks for, what uh, the Institute of Transportation Engineers looks for. We ended up uh, looking at the traffic uh, volume out there, both before and after COVID. Uh, the way we did that is uh, the traffic signals that you have now at the intersection of C Street and Quincy Shore Drive, those are now under the jurisdiction of the city of Quincy. And I, I reached out to, to Allie, and the traffic engineer, and she was kind enough to send the traffic volumes of travel accounts uh, before COVID started. And then I hired other people to count the intersection uh, uh, after, you know, the uh, the COVID just sometime in the summertime and I compared the two. And I found that uh, the traffic volumes before COVID started were 3% higher than, than what we're using now. So I increased the, the existing traffic counts by the 3%. And then that brought me to 2021. And then I increased those traffic accounts by 1% per year to the year 2028. So we got have a base level. The reason I got the 1% per year, we went back and looked at another mascot county station. And we noticed that the traffic volume in the area had been increasing at roughly 1% per year uh, uh, prior to COVID. So we used that same factor to take 2021 and bring it up to 2028. Then we looked at the uh, trips that the uh, that the proposal would, would generate. We had actually looked at the 24 units back in the fall, and now we're looking at the uh, the uh, the trip generation for the 20 units. Um, basically, the uh, the 20 units will generate about seven trips during the morning peak hour with two inbound and five outbound. And in the evening peak hour, it will generate nine vehicle trips with five inbound and four outbound. The uh, uh, number of trips over the course of a weekday will be about uh, 108 with 54 inbound and 54 outbound. Now we use the ITE trip generation report looking at the size of the restaurant, the seats and the use. And based on that use and the size, the ITE trip generation manual does have formulas that you use to go back to get approximately what the trips were generating prior to the close of the restaurant. So the restaurant, not that you use that, but just it's nice to realize that the, the restaurant will uh, uh, be generating about uh, uh, 108 trips uh, during the the course of a day with with, with the evenly split between uh, 54 in and 54 out. Uh, it had been generating about 54 trips during the evening peak hour. You know, pick up of the uh, the takeout in the restaurant and, and all of that, which was a lot lower than the trips that we're projecting for this. Now, it, 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 when you project the trips for a residential area, you do it based on the units, based on the size of the building, you know, and, and all of that. But it's important to realize that if you do 20, 20 units, not everybody goes out during the peak hour in the morning and everybody comes in during the evening peak hour. You have some people working from home. You have some people out sick. You have some people on vacation. But based on the Institute of Transportation Engineers, you know, it, it takes this into consideration based on empirical data. And it's been tested and upheld in court and all of that. So this this is a fairly good representation of of what this, uh, this project will be generating. The other thing we looked at was the crashes out the front and the there were a couple of crashes further down by, by the Fox and Hounds, but there were no crashes directly at the driveway. But if you look at them at the driveway, it, it wasn't, you know, uh, there was like one or two that were right in front of the building, but not at the driveway, you know? So 
and, and that was only property damage only, not, not personal injury. Now, we also looked at the stopping site distance coming out of the site. And, and uh, we did a speed study, and, and the speed study showed that the uh, um, speed on C Street averaged about 32 miles an hour, but the 85th percentile of the speed at which 85% of the traffic is traveling at or below is, is uh, 36 miles per hour in the southbound direction and, and 37 in the northbound direction. So looking at that, we used the 37 and the, the site distance uh, required was uh, 267 feet. And you have over that, you got over 275 to the south. Obviously that, that chain link fence on the Navy uh, support, they used to call it Navy Reserve when I was a kid, but they call it Navy support now. Uh, I know my, my son's a captain in the Navy now, but they, they changed the, 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 the site distance on that. But you know, if that could be pulled back, it would help, but it's not necessary in order to have what's required. And uh, uh, so we, we have the uh, required stop and site distance. The trip generation is a lot less. Uh, and, and basically that said, I mean, I like talking traffic levels of service. Are, are, are good. The, the amount of traffic that we're adding to this didn't change the uh, levels of service at the uh, Quincy Shore Drive C Street intersection, and it did not change the uh, uh, approach level of service on e any approach approaching that intersection. The uh, side driveway coming out, uh, it will have a C level in the, in the morning peak hour, and it will have an F, which is the worst you can get, the F new peak hour, which means there will be extended delay uh, coming out of the driveway in the afternoon peak hour. And, and uh, as you know, my office was next door for a number of years, and, and a lot of times uh, you may have to turn right during the, the evening peak hour in order to come out of the site and get into the traffic stream, go up to maybe the, uh, the, the convenience store and turn around and come back. But, uh, during the morning, during the mid morning or mid afternoon, there are gaps to take into that uh, in order to take a left turn out of that. But I know the uh, the, the, the uh, proponent would talk to the board if if you're more comfortable and, and, and taking a look at that and, and talking with your traffic engineer, then then, then that, that's fine as well. Hey. <clears throat> Attorney Carroll, is there uh, any other mem anything else to present or? At the end, after we hear from all sides, I'd like a possible summation. Would that be acceptable? Yeah, we can we can see what we can do here. <laughs> um, I know that there's quite a number of people that uh, again, it's a lot of people's probably first time on on this uh, meeting, so we will uh, be taking testimony. We're going to first call. Uh, those in favor, uh, you got to be sworn in, and then we'll once we go through those in favor, uh, we'll be we'll be taking testimony from those opposed or undecided. So, uh, again, just please uh, raise your hand, uh, press star nine, uh, and we'll we'll get you unmuted, um, and and just know you got to get sworn in as well at the same time. So, um, does any board member in the meantime does any board member have any questions as of yet? I have I have a question for Mr. Gillen. Um, Jack, I, I was curious about the left turn in and left turn out. If you're southbound there, on well, coming well, off of this, coming off of, off uh, Quincy Shore Drive, and you want to take a left going in there, it, yeah, that would be it, a difficult move, correct? It is a difficult move, you know. And and the 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 uh, Asheville Green Book, the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, they're the ones that establish not only what site distance you need and what the formulas are for that, but also how you measure those site distances. So what they do is they start by the travel lane. Well, as you know, that solid white edge line or, or, or shoulder line, that is the edge of the travel lane for traffic going in the, the north or the east direction on C Street. So you'd have to come back 14.6 feet from that you know, into the driveway and use that point looking back to the edge of the, the post of the fence 
and then run the angle and see where does that give you on the arc of C Street as it swings around. And uh, looking at the photo, at the uh, uh, my figure 18, you can see that that basically gives you the minimum. And I'm not saying it's great. It gives you the 275 feet on figure 18. So it, it, it does work, but I had to look at it two or three times to, to see uh, it, it, it's not great, but it does work. And, and I, I was surprised that there hadn't been crashes out there when the, when the other restaurant was, was generating more traffic there, but that, that is what it is, I guess. Well, my, my other my other question concerns are um, if the light if they are queued at the light to take a left up Quincy Shore Drive in the morning, yep. and somebody's looking to get in on the left on the opposite direction, the left side, yep. that's again another difficult move, correct? I, I agree. I mean, it's it's like you have a, uh, a the signals work. <laughs> A lot better than they did when I was there. And I hate saying oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, I agree. But you add the lanes and you put a new machine in there, you know? So it, it works a lot better than it did back then. Although we did the best we could at the time. And now they're under the church, you know? It goes back further. housing that they're, they're building downtown and everything unfortunately so, it's not only it's it not different. quincy alone it's all the south suburban areas situate and cohasset and hull those areas i, I, I live too. in weymouth now i know what they're doing too. yeah yeah right so, I, I agree with you on that but uh it, it, it's a it, it's it's difficult but it, it, it's manageable that, that that's all i'm gonna say i mean when you look at these numbers versus what they used to be like i said the uh the restaurant used to Used to generate uh, uh, at least 54 trips during the during the. Uh, I'm sorry, they used to generate at least 53 uh, trips during the evening peak hour, and we're down to 10, 11. You know, so I mean, it's different. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Chin, any questions at this time? I have no questions. Mr. Frankel. I guess my, my only question for the moment is, can I discuss the parking situation? Sure. I, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the grid and it says two visitor parking spaces for the entire 20 units. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah. Does that seem a little bit, so that that's like, you know, one, one person having dinner. Um, those, those two are additional. Yeah additional to the 42 i get it so it, it's it's two per unit and then two guest spaces in total yes but do, do i read it correctly yeah so the this is tim johnson the architect uh, the required parking is 1.75 space per dwelling unit then we have 0.25 space for visitor so of those 42 unit the, the 42 that are required some of that would be visitor on the grade parking in the rear. And then we also have the two visitor parking spots on the front of the property. Okay, so how many units are, how many parking spaces are being designated per unit? You know, like, identified as, as exclusive parking, or I'm guessing it's gonna be exclusive use, not deeded. So how many, what, what's being dedicated to the 20 units? So we have, we would have six units dedicated to the six one beds. We would have, yeah, six spaces dedicated to the six one beds. We would have then 28 spaces dedicated to the two beds, which would give us 34. And then the rest we would, we you would say. Eight, you have realistically eight guest spaces. Yes. Uh, plus the two in the front, which gives us 10. Yeah, plus the two in the front, so we would have exactly right. All right, so the the so it's actually forty four spaces, forty two plus the two in the front, of which thirty four are taken as exclusive use. Correct. 
Okay, That's correct. I understand. Thank you. And Mr. Hamill, any questions at this time? No, that was my same co parking question. Thank you. I just had I just one. Uh, Chris, is this it, condos or apartments? Uh, it's condos. Condos. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, this time we'll be asking anybody in favor who would like to speak, please raise your hand or press star nine, wave at us, do something. First call, second call, last call. We had one oh. sneak in. Oh, I don't sorry, know if they're sorry. in favor of their. Sorry, 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 sorry. They, they jumped in there late. Sorry. Yeah, if you uh, can, Andrew's iPhone, can we unmute him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Is this, I don't know, is this talking about 114 meeting? Uh, Excuse me? This is 105 C Street. This is 105 C Street. Oh, okay. I don't know if I went to the wrong one. Am I in the wrong you, one? What were you trying to yeah, say? Yeah. 114 Curtis Avenue? Yeah. That, that hasn't been called yet. It'll be called uh, later on in the meeting. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. I just didn't know if I missed that one. So. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, Citizen Rotafel? Hey, John, hold on. You need to be sworn in. John, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Thank you. John Rotafail, 62 Grand Wall Road. Um, basically, um, you know, I, I come to these meetings all the time. I look at a lot of the development, and um, I was at that um, um, restaurant many, many, many times in the past. So, I think the traffic will be less than what was there before. I mean, let's just, I'm just going to do a devil advocate right here. If this doesn't go in there, it might be a Dunkin' Donuts. It might be a Chick-fil-A. I mean, those would be like insane amounts of traffic. I don't think traffic is definitely um, an issue at all in this case. I think this would be lesser traffic than, um, than were there before. I don't necessarily agree with, um, um, everything that Mr. Gillum said in, in his traffic study. Um, I think, you know, I know if I lived there, um, I, I would drive to Wendy's or you might drive to Popeye's, you might drive to Dunkin' Donuts, even if you're living there and not working um, because it's in such a convenient location. So I do think that the average trips that people take from that location will be more than um, usual but still not enough to not make that um, a good development. It's right near Quincy Center. It is in theory, um, you know, um, not that far away if someone wanted to walk to Quincy Center train station. Um, they're not asking for um, a ton of units there out of all the uh, projects I've seen. This isn't one of the worst. I, I don't really understand. I spoke last night at the city council meeting um, on three different items. They had three items where you could speak. And um, there was only one person that spoke on all three of the items three different times, and, and that was me. And a lot of these meetings, um, we don't see barely anyone come any of the time. I'm, I'm here at all of them. So I'm, I get very confused. I don't know why there, there's so many people here at, at, at so – it's just, it's just craziness. I mean, if everyone's been watching, we need the new growth. We need the new taxes. Um, you know, this is we're going to get a lot of taxes from this development, and I, I don't really see why this should be a negative project. So, I mean, I'm in favor of this um, just because we're doing this all around the city of Quincy. Um, you know, I'm in favor of doing this everywhere in the city. I think that there's some parts of the city that they feel that you, they're not supposed to develop right up the street. Hi, John, John, can you keep it to this project? I mean, we've got a lot. We've got a lot of people on here, please. Okay, well, I mean, as a Christmas present, I, I won't speak on any more projects tonight. Um, hey. But any, but anyway, uh, Merry Christmas to Marty if you're watching the meeting at home or from a river or wherever you are. And uh, thank you very much. And um, um, I look forward to hearing what everyone else is going to say. I'm actually going to go do dishes. Thank you. Um, we did receive one letter in favor. I'm not going to read it. Uh, 
in the interest of time. Uh, so uh, just one more time, last call. Anyone else in favor of this project? Okay, call that part of here and close. Do we have any notes from DPW? Nothing from DPW. Okay. 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 Um, so again, I'm sure we have a lot of people here. Let's try and not, uh, you know, I'll say this, what your what your neighbor said, um, and we'll open it up to those opposed or undecided. And just remember, uh, you're you need to be sworn in um, from uh, Russell. Yeah, Joe Connor was the first, followed by iPhone eight five seven five two. Joe, can you just take yeah, an good oath? evening. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, if you can just take an oath, Joe, please. And Mr. Connor, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Would you please state your name and address for the record? Joe Connor, 62 Virginia Road, Quincy, Massachusetts. Thank you. Floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. So, first, I just want to uh, reach out and just say thanks to the investors. I know Mr. Timmons and his partner uh, have done a good job keeping the Mary Mount neighborhood in the loop and informed. So we appreciate that. I think you're going to see a lot of people from the neighborhood here who want to speak tonight about our concerns. And, you know, the one I want to speak about, and I know we had the traffic engineer talk briefly, it's really around safety and the impact to um, what that new development is going to do for traffic coming in and out of C Street and the safety concerns that we've got. I know I heard the traffic engineer talk about you know, people can just take a right, pull out of there, and then they can just turn around down it, you know, across at the grocery store, Ginger Betty's. Like, that's that's the biggest problem in bottleneck we've got right now on C Streets because people are trying to figure out how to go south, and they can't go south. You can't turn left on C Street. So they go up and they do U-turns. We just had a traffic accident last week with somebody trying to do a U-turn there and got broadsided. You know, the, the question I have is for people pulling out of the establishment, that do want to travel south towards the police station, will they be able to take a left-hand turn across C Street traffic, or are they being forced to turn right and figure out a way how to navigate south? So, I mean, can we put stipulations in, Jay, and approvals like that at, at the zoning, or is that more of a planning? No, we could put stipulations in like that. You, Mr. O'Connor, I mean, I'm, Mr. Connor, sorry, I, 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 uh, I felt the same way when I looked at the plans. Um, I, I thought there's just no way you could ever allow somebody to take a left. And I completely understand, you know, the, the challenges of, of people, you know, taking U-turns, uh, illegal U-turns up at, up at uh, the next intersection. Um, so uh, the answer is we can absolutely stipulate what could be, what could be done right there in terms of uh, people being only able to take a right-hand turn. Um, and I'm sure the city's you know, going to want to protect itself that way anyways, with any approval. So, um, you know, duly noted. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I think that's the primary concern is just the, you know, the safety for the neighborhood and kind of the fabric of what it's going to do to the, the, the amount of travel cutting through the neighborhood as well. But thank you for letting me speak tonight. All right. Thank you. Now we have iPhone 857 followed by Mike O'Connor. Kevin, hold on. We just got to have you take a oath here. Is he unmuted? Yep. Sir, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the manner I'm hearing? I do. Please take your name and address for the record. Kevin Gary, 10 Sam is set out. The floor is yours, Kevin. Thanks, Brian. I think uh, first I want to thank the board for um, letting the name of this talk. Um, you know, over the last month or so, I've spoken, spoke to, I don't know, hundreds of neighbors. Um, and there's so many concerns about this, you know, and I think a lot of them are here to voice those concerns. You know, my biggest concern is right now is looking at this and whether it's two visitor spots, eight visitor spots, you know, the traffic study is, is welcome. Um, I think that was one of the things we wanted last time, but you know, people are going to visit, right? So if there's, if there's 20, if there's 20, families moving in because uh, I was told that they were they were targeting towards families with these condos. If there's 20 families moving in, um, you know, what happens when there's a party? What happens when there's a get together? Where are these people going to park? 
they're going to park across the street and then they're going to have to they're going to have to cross c street which is i mean we just had the traffic study it's the accidents there are ridiculous it's a danger street there's there's what two ent- uh two crosswalks in like a mile distance um it's dangerous it's it's dangerous it's going to be you know, it's going to be on these developers and it's going to be on the city if it passes, if someone dies. Um, and I don't want to see that. You know, the other thing, it, it was just brought up is the right turn only. Um, you know, just dangerous U-turns, you know, people coming through the neighborhoods. You know, this, this is a neighborhood filled with kids. You know, we already deal with a lot of the traffic coming to and from Boston um, during rush hour. You know, we're adding more, more, you know, 40 more cars that are going to be cutting through our neighborhoods um, that we have to worry about. Um, you know, and the other thing, it's just the Res B. Res B is supposed to be low density. And I think it's a it's a dangerous. Um, it's it's a uh, dangerous precedent to start. You know, we we let this go uh, 20 units. And then, you know, I know I know it's not a given, but it's it's definitely it's the defense for the next person to say, well, that's not low density. That's not low density. And sooner or later, we have C Street that's completely filled with condos. So I'd like to stop it here. Um, I'd like to know what right to build is. Um, and I'd like to know what the hardship is that they would be asking for all these variances. And that's all I got. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. We'll go to Mike O'Connor, followed by Doug McLaughlin. Mike, just one, hang on a second, Mike. You got to be sworn in here, please. Yeah, Mr. Mr. O'Connor, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Please Thank take you. your name and address for the record, please. Michael O'Connor, 60 Highfield Road, Quincy, Massachusetts. Well, it's yours, Mike. Okay, thank you uh, for letting me speak. Um, I have statements and questions. I'll try to be as brief and fast as I can. Um, my my major question is why can't this project just uh, apply for something that uh, conforms to the the current zoning on the books? Well, I, I don't see a hard. That's why we have a zoning board. You know, I mean, we're we're no. When we draw these maps, there's no no two lots are the same, no two areas are the same, and and that's that's you know exactly why the zoning board of appeals exists across the country for, for, to 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 be able to look at these situations and and, and so you know I'm, I'm sure we're going to hear that a lot tonight, uh, buy right projects and things like that, but but that's why this board has existed. That's why I've been a member on this board for seven years and and voted on a number of different cases. So um, I, I understand everybody's concern about that uh, about buy right, but but that's why we're here. I understand, Brian. I probably should have rephrased that. Uh, what I what I really mean to say is, given the uh, meetings that I attended and uh, the postponements and I think general confusion around this, it's quite obvious. Um, I'm not going to speak for Brian, who just spoke before me, but uh, have, there's upwards of 300 signatures of people who oppose this project, sending a pretty clear indication to this developer speculator that uh, the, the current plan is not well. And I, I think, you know, as we keep moving down this road, uh, more confusion is caused with delays and changes to the project and um, getting it, uh, getting everybody to manage their schedule around these guys is getting to be very frustrating. And I think we already kind of sent that message to them, but I'm not hearing anything in return. And specifically, um, I do hear comments said like safety is being addressed, traffic's being addressed. It is not. Uh, the, the traffic engineer tonight said probably the only option for somebody taking a ride out of there is go to bang a U-turn at the convenience store. So I would love to know, you know, who compensates the people that live in, in this neighborhood and that intersection for the permanent inconvenience of dealing with that, both on a safety and a traffic. Who enforces the owners that move in uh, to on on renting out their property? So essentially, it does become. A Who enforces the truck parking out front when there's a truck there already? I, I, I've never heard any remedies to these types of issues, 
But most of all, from, from my perspective, it is the permanent inconvenience that's going to cause the neighbors and the abutters. It's going to cause a permanent detriment to the value of all of our homes. Um, and I and I, I, I want to restate that the precedent that gets set by allowing such a project that, that doesn't comply to the degree that this, this does not, um, it, it would be hours before Fox and Hound Grumpies and Ginger Betties, everybody was applying because they want the same thing. You know, Mar Marymount does share its roads with everybody. Everybody from Weymouth, Hingham, Situate, Cohasset, everybody going to and coming from Boston. Um, and I also would like to go on the record and say, you know, I, I, I understand the city solicitors involved in this project. And uh, I wonder why, given the opportunity to attend meetings or this, he's chosen not, to, if not the least reason would be to satisfy any suspicion of impropriety. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Doug McLaughlin. And then Marie, excuse me, Bilial, I believe. We'll go to Doug first. Mr. McLaughlin, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, no matter now in hearing? I do. You state your name and address for the record. I am Doug McLaughlin, 238 B Street. Thank you, sir. Floor is yours. Yeah, I just want to address the concerns around um, urban density. And I think it goes back to... Um, the former comments and um, prior prior um, people. So as Marymount mm -hmm. goes, it's a residential neighborhood. And so the fact that we're putting in a high density unit building at that address, um, there's not much benefit to the community. Uh, there's a lot of upside to the developer, obviously, with um, the more units they can fit onto the same lot size. Um, I would offer to say, like, if it was a Dunkin' Donuts or a restaurant, Clearly, there's benefits to the community at large, even though the traffic would be more. Um, with this, we'll just see an increase in traffic and very little benefit. Um, and so I, I just, I get your points where the zoning board is there to grant variance, but in this case of this project, if they stick to variance, I think there's still room to, you know, put some units on that lot and probably make some money for them. So that's my statement. Thank you, sir. Go to Marie, followed by Kim. Marie, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and to nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Uh, please take your name and address. Um, June Marie Belisle at 9 Edgemere Road. Um, I'm so sorry. This is literally the first um, one of these meetings I've ever been to, um, and I tried to raise my hand before we actually got to the testimony part, but I wasn't able to. So I'm just going to ask a That's question. Okay. Really you. quickly, um, you mentioned that there was a letter that was um, in favor of this. And I'm just wondering, I know you said you didn't want to read it in the interest of time, totally respect that. Just because it seems that there are um, so few comments in favor of this and, and quite a lot um, against it, I would be interested in either um, hearing it maybe at the end, or I'm just wondering if there is a uh, some place that it will be posted, just for those of us who are still undecided, um, who would be interested in hearing more of those perspectives um, for the development. Thank you. Posters anywhere? Are they part of the file? Yeah. So it is It is part of the file. It'll be part of the okay. file on, on um, you can you can access it through the, the city's inspectional services website and the address there. Um, and, and you know, it had just typical points of beautification of neighborhood. Um, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to read all those opposed because there's a number opposed as well. And I thought in only in fairness that that I, w I wasn't going to read sure. both sure. out loud. The sure. board members do have access to all of them. So, um, you know, it's not like it's not being uh, n noted by those those that um, those that are going to vote on this tonight. Yeah, definitely. I just say, you know, for those of us undecided, uh, you know, we're certainly get to getting to hear um, a lot of opinions from from folks against it, which is great. I would just be, you know, sort of interested in uh, what other folks were saying. That's all. Thank you. 
Appreciate it. I'll go to Kim, followed by Bill. Kim, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. State your name and address for the record, please. Kimberly Magaldi, 102 Pontiac Road. Laura George, Kim. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. Um, obviously, I'm concerned about traffic and, most importantly, that it's going to lead to issues with everyone else wanting to build these monstrous condos. Um, I think it's just way too big for the Marymount neighborhood. There are other parts of Quincy that could definitely use condos, and I don't think Marymount's one of them. That's it. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate you being brief. And we'll go to Bill, followed by Joe. Bill, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Hi, am I the right Bill? Correct. Bill Zamzow, please. Thank you. Uh, Did you hear I, that? I swear to tell the whole truth, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Thank Just you. Uh, provide your name and address, please, for the record. Okay. Bill Zamzow, 356 Washington, Quincy. Thank you. Um, when this matter first came before the ZBA two months ago, I submitted a written comment suggesting that the applicant be directed to develop primary egress via the hockey rink access road and so outlet at the former Grumpy Whites and thus away from the C Street Quincy Shore Drive congestion. There appears to be space to do so, yeah. a suggestion. Even better, this suggestion could be readily done such that the adjacent large multi-unit complexes in the, in the immediate area could tie into this alternate egress. Even better, the city could develop some signalization at that intersection where the hockey rink is and then so make not only safety, but calm the traffic. I subsequently found out who was the applicant and how it was processed and had trouble with that. I'm not going to address that. What I am going to address is the project itself started out at 30 units. To my understanding, and I'm not a pro, that was close to three times what code would allow. It was dropped back to 24, which is about two, three to four of what's allowed, it's now down to 20, which I'm spitballing at about one eight times what's allowed. Um, this doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't work. It's a bad setting. The traffic engineer acknowledges that it's going to create an F problem on other things. What I would suggest is going back to my original suggestion on egress, the applicant should be encouraged to do as I've suggested, and the project should be dropped down to more in the realm of 12 to 16 units. That would be above what he's allowed by right, and that would give him some ability to, to accommodate the costs he may entail by doing what I've suggested. That would be fair. That would be equitable. But the ask for the massive range of variances there just isn't a hardship here. The only hardship is to the applicant's pocketbook. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We'll go to Joe, followed by Christine. Mr. Murphy, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. <clears throat> Please state your name and address. My name is Joseph Murphy. I live at 18 Macy Street. And I've been following this matter um, for the last couple months. I just I want to say two quick things so other people can talk. I think any plan that relies on making people go right out of the driveway to go north when they're going to eventually go south is a bad plan. It, it just doesn't work. Right now at that intersection, when people want to leave at 430 from uh, the DPW lot, they have their very own police officer out there stopping traffic and waving them through. There won't be such a... a you know, resource for this development. Also, the parking, I get that in the, in the aggregate, there's enough spots, um, sort of, but it's an illusion because there's 21 units and there's only 34 dedicated to, um, to resident parking. That means there's going to be um, people using guest spots who live there. There's Whenever there's a Super Bowl, Thanksgiving, whatever you want, there's going to be a mess and people are going to take that mess across the street to um, the Marymount community. So with that in mind, um, I, I really encourage people to, you know, come back smaller, 
build within zoning and um and you don't have a hardship if all it is is like you want to make money that's all i have to say thank you thank you joe we're going to go to looks like sarah then followed by dave sarah do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth in the manner now in hearing i do thank you please take your name and address sarah van stan 33 virginia road and actually joe murphy just covered um, my last question about the parking so i think he said it was an illusion because i just i think i heard them say that you get one spot for one bedroom right and then that would create the the remaining guest parking but a lot of couples get a one bedroom apartment together my husband and i did that before we moved into a home so we would have needed two spots because we would have worked in two different places so a lot of those spots are going to be eaten up there's not an extra amount of spots there's not guest parking if you're giving a one spot to a one bedroom and that was all i had to say because everyone else said a lot of great comments thank you sarah appreciate it We'll go to Dave, followed by Stephanie. Mr. Hyman, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth from in the manner known hearing? I do. Thank you. Please take your name and address. Uh, Dave Hyman at 260 C Street. And so a, a lot of the stuff I think has been said, and I won't reiterate it all. I think um, to start with, I think it's, it is too big. I think the... Um, the safety of the, the traffic is a is a concern in terms of that, you know, that turning out of there. I think it's also going to create traffic that's going to build up. I know the Chinese food restaurant really wasn't creating morning traffic, but any traffic that hits that light backs up through C Street and people turn down the side streets in the morning, which is unsafe for the kids. We already have an issue with that. I think anything is going to back up that traffic also is going to is going to be an additional issue as, as we come to that. Something that hasn't been solved as of now, it's just going to get worse. I also think the setback on that, it, it's not setback enough as we're looking at the green space. I think the variance on the green space in general is, is pretty large, uh, but also there's looking for a variance in the front of the building, which, you know, if we're going to be building anything there, we should be setting it back. That's not directly onto the curb. Um, I know it's got a little bit setback there, but not, not enough, in my opinion. I think that's my uh, only thing extra stuff to add to the conversation. Appreciate you keeping it brief, Dave. Thank you. Yep. Stephanie, followed by CBG3. Ms. Uh, guys, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the manner now in hearing? I do. Please take your name and address. Stephanie Gallegos, 238 C Street. I just have two quick comments. I live on C Street, obviously, a couple hundred yards from this proposed project. I unfortunately have a driveway that backs out onto C Street and the traffic has gotten worse since COVID and it's easily taking me over five minutes just to back out of my driveway during rush hour in the morning or the afternoon. So you can say what you want about the traffic study, but I'm living it every day and it's already an absolute nightmare. And then I'm also curious why nothing's being said about the schools. Marymount's a, a very small school and I'm curious um, how that will be impacted or how that's not being addressed in any way that's it thank you for your comments i just i will say when we look at these approvals for things like this uh that that falls more on i'd say planning with density like we we don't really look at what the impacts downward onto the school system at this point uh, maybe it's something for counselors to add into the approval process but as of right now we haven't ever considered that as far as i know well, we have CBG3 followed by Christine. Sir, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I don't know if we can hear you there, sir. Yeah, I, no, Perfect. I do. Yep, yes, thank please you. Please your name and address for the record. My name is Charles Gray, 56 Longwood Road, Marymount. Thank you, sir. Um, I just wanted to say, make a comment about uh, the developer's initial comments um, indicating that somehow the community is uh, or our voices are somehow disgruntled voices or agitating voices. And I just wish that the developer would show a little more respect toward people in my neighborhood. That's it. Appreciate it. And we have Christine and then Kristen and Nick. 
Uh, Christine, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Christine Cody, uh, Christine Cody, 297 C Street. I'll keep it brief as, as um, many of my comments have uh, already been expressed. My concerns with the traffic, the safety, um, the, the large precedent we're setting by putting a massive condo unit in our neighborhood only to be followed by grumpy white area that will probably try to get similar sizing. Uh, we're just getting more and more traffic in a very congested area. I've lived in, I've lived in this neighborhood for 50, 60 years, and it's getting really congested. The, the traffic on C Street, uh, I'll agree with the woman that spoke to before me. I, I'm, I am doubtful of the, of the traffic study because I, I, I've seen uh, much greater speeds, and there's just a lot of concern. So I just wanted to go on the record to express my opposition to this proposal. Thank you. I appreciate it. And Kristen and Nick. Yes, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the men and women hearing? We do. Thank you. Uh, so we live at 118 C Street. We are right across the street. Name, uh, just full name for the record. Uh, Nicholas Cody. Thank you, sir. So uh, we have some separate issues. Um, it was originally talked about that it would be a right turn only out of the unit. Um, is that still the plan for that? But we, uh, we hadn't got to that point of that uh, process yet. You know, we did discuss it, that, that it is possible for us to put in any approval that it would be a right turn only. Because uh, we'd like to say that it should be going both ways out. Because um, a right turn only sends all the traffic our way. Um, which is bad for Marymount. Um, we'd like to see it go left or right. Um, and I've spoken to Chris Timmons about that too. I don't like the idea of a right turn only. Um, obviously, it sends all the traffic by our house. And it also, uh, people will be looping around, um, like was talked about before. Um, that was one of our concerns. Um, our second concern, which I've also talked to Chris about, was the uh, utility work and street. Um, we've been told um that everything will eventually be paved over um during faith phase three of C street construction um and i think a lot of people would like to see those plans um because right now they're gonna have to rip up the new street to put in the utility tie-ins and um i know a lot of people including ourselves have concerns about patches in the new street work um and that's all we have appreciate it and looks like J-A-A. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Can you speak your name and address? Hi, good evening, Lionel Andre, 48 Longwood Road <coughs> in Marymount. <clears throat> um, I would like to raise the significant concern of the precedent that sets um, for the C Street develop future development. It'll be a very short time window until uh, Grumpy White supplies for the same exact precedence uh, and down the street, as has been stated before. The um, solicitor, when he took part of this project, knew the exact roles. Um, and so there was no reason, there is no reason to apply for self-inflicted um, uh, hardship. Um, the other concern I would like to raise to echo exactly what Charles said, um, the neighborhood has been nothing but respectful. Uh, we've organized ourselves. We signed petitions. We attended the uh, the meetings. The stone at the beginning was unwanted. I'd like to call him out on this. And lastly, there are two votes in favor and two people in favor, at least 300 that are against it. Not a single person I've talked to in my neighborhood ha is in favor of this. I would like the board to keep that in mind when they make their vote. Thank you. Thank you. We have David Jacob. Mr. Jacob, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Um, can you see me? I do. Thank you very much, David Jacobs, 10 Charles Street in Housenack in Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for hosting this meeting. Um, I, like many before, have been following this for quite some time now. Um, there was some good questions asked uh, previous that haven't been answered, like what is the right 
That was the first gentleman who spoke. He asked the question, what can they build there by right? I know there's been a lot of talk about right, but from what I from what I looked at, it looks like they can build about seven units there by right. And they're asking to build about 20. Okay, that's a lot. Also, what is their hardship? Like, just give me one example of what their hardship is. Like, what's the thing where it's like, Oh, if I can't do this, like my uh, my property is valued from the point from where I purchased it for one. Point. The other one is what about renting? That was spoken about at previous at the previous meeting. You know, there are many condo associations where it's like, you know, fifty percent of the building has to be you know owner occupied, so only fifty percent can be rented out, and that's based off of um, you know um, seniority. You know, if you reach that level in your seniority list, you know you can rent, and um, you know, again, like the precedent here is is ridiculous. I mean, it, it's just it's just such a massive project. And you know, a, a lot of people talk about again the parking. You know, a lot of people talk about the neighborhoods. You know, I mean, there's a cemetery across the street. I mean, people are going to park there, and my family is buried right there on that corner, right there on that corner next to that white house with the the new conditioned white house with the black windows. How many cars are going to be parked right there every night, every day? That's all. I appreciate it. Appreciate your okay. comments. I, I, I just want to say one more thing. I'm sorry. About right. the, the petitioner's opening remarks, you know, that was pretty gutsy. You know, he's here asking for a really big ask. A really big ask. He's talking like we're denying him his right. But really, we're, he's asking for more than what he's entitled to. And he, he's, he speaks like somebody who's above everybody else because he's well-connected in Quincy. Appreciate your comments. Is um, anyone else opposed or undecided? I don't end here anymore, but for some reason we're getting some feedback off of uh, Christine's iPhone. Um, if you could make sure you mute yourself on that other end. Um, you did have somebody who spoke earlier who's got his hand back up, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure if you want to bring him back. Yeah, okay, unmute Kevin, if you can just be brief, please. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, it looks like uh, it's, it's winding down and everyone has had a chance to speak. But just so um, just so everybody is clear, the neighborhood is ready and willing to crowdsource. And, uh, to Kevin, uh, you can talk about that after. Sorry, that, that's just not. Well, something. we're going to bring it to land court if it goes through. That, that, that's fine. You can have that conversation. That's something that you guys can have internally. We're, we're not here to talk about what potential court cases. We haven't even got to a situation where we've approved or denied anything. So absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. A um, couple more people came in late. Uh, Sharon. Yep. Sherry Ann and Salters Sherry followed by uh, Councillor Mahone. Sherry, Sherry you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing. Sherry Ann, there you go. Yes, I do. Can you state your name and the, an address for the record, please? Sherry Ann O'Connor, 60 Highfield Road. Okay, thank you. Floor is yours. Uh, I just want to make it clear that I'm completely opposed to this. Um, the neighbors have invested a lot of time and effort in trying to bring our issues to the developer. He's not done nearly enough to address our concerns. Um, this is this is dangerous. It, it is asking for more than is allowed by law. There is not a hardship to have something this monstrous. Um, and I it, this isn't a multifamily neighborhood, and that's exactly what's being created. And I, I really hope that you're hearing, you know, what everyone has to say. And I know there was a petition that went around that has at least 400 signatures that I know you folks have. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And um, Mark. Salters, Salters, followed by uh, Council Mo. Mr. Sauters, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in the hearing? Uh, yes, I do. I do. Um, my name is Mark Sauter. I live in the neighborhood. Um, I'm the um, president of the Marymount Association, which is about a 100-year-old association. Uh, we have about 375 
households in the Marymount neighborhood uh, who are dues paying members. I think it's one of the most active associations in the city of Quincy, if not you know, throughout the whole state of Massachusetts. Um, thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, thank you to the board for hearing all these concerns. Thank you to the developers for proposing a plan. Um, I think people in Quincy understand that we live in a city that is not a you know, straight suburban city. There are gonna be projects that are uh, multi-family projects. They're gonna be apartment pr projects. Um, we understand that. I, I think what I wanted to register here tonight is a level of disappointment uh, to the developers for their lack of outreach to the Marymount Association. I'm not a developer, but if I was, I would think one of the first people that I would contact would be uh, the, the group that's, you know, represents the entire neighborhood that you want to build in. Um, why do you want to build here? Why do you need variances? What's your vision for, for the property? These are things that I think we would have liked to have heard directly and we haven't. It's been piecemeal at community meetings that are scheduled at last notice or at late notice uh, at difficult times to attend. Um, so I think we're starting off with a level of uh, concern because of, of the lack thereof of outreach. Uh, so I think that sets the developers and sets the neighborhood in, in a certain place. Doesn't help then to, for the developer to start tonight with a disingenuous comment uh, trying to cast aspersions on different people in the neighborhood for having valid concerns. You know, if there were two people who had concerns and you had 30 other people who were all in favor, well, then I, I think maybe you're in a position where you say, yeah, I'm not really sure what's, uh, what's driving those underlying concerns, but the, the, the entire neighborhood's opposed to this. So don't come as your opening statement and 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 cast or sling mud at the people who are taking their time at 5:30 at night, two weeks before Christmas, you know when everyone's so busy to participate in this in this uh, you know process. So that's not going to help, and I, I think that reflects on the project. Um, I don't think it needs to really be be said further about the the main concerns, the lack of parking. That's going to lead to to parking across the street in the Marymount neighborhood on, on, uh, on, on the street across there from Fox and Hound. That's going to lead to people crossing C Street in a dangerous manner, as, as already happens. And then the pe people are going to be turning right out of this property and either attempting dangerous U-turns onto C Street or they're going to be cutting through the neighborhood, um, you know, especially in the morning at, at a time where kids are walking to school and there's already cut through traffic. So again, I think every, anyone here realistically understands that there is gonna be development. Let's just have a developer who comes to us with better outreach, better understanding of, of why they're here, why they're trying to build. Don't sling mud at the people who are, live in the neighborhood or around the neighborhood um, and you know, actually work to address some of these problems. I mean, I think people who've been around this, like it, it, it all appears a game, you know, okay, the fir first development plan is 42 con apartments, then we cut it, it's four floors, then we cut it, like we, we get it, people aren't stupid with this, and you're not getting any points from trying to now appear reasonable when you could have had the same project before everyone two months ago and not wasted people's time. So that's been going on for too long. Thank you everyone for your time and your attention and I hope the board takes these uh, thoughts from everyone into account tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. And just uh, before Council Mahoney, just before I just want to make sure there's no other testimony from anybody else in the neighborhood that wanted to hear. So do we have any more takers? No. Uh, uh, Council McCarthy would like to, to speak. So I'll just let uh, Council McCarthy jump on here first. Uh, Council Mahoney being the war council. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chairman Riddell, and um, you know, everyone who's on tonight. And um, as Mark Sauda said, um, you know, uh, all these projects start out 
as we know, uh, as anyone would do probably on, on this call at a very high level uh, to go into the whole procedure and protocol of zoning and planning and conservation, whatever they need to go into to see what they end up with and see what these boards get to. I'm glad we had a couple of good community meetings, um, knowing that it's a tough spot, uh, knowing that whatever goes in there um, is going to be a tough in and out. Um, and the two words, um, traffic and parking, I think we'll come up with whatever is in there. Um, you know, the applicant did go from 32 down to, he's at 20 now, uh, has tried to make some changes. So I know that um, they were trying to make it work, uh, but it's a very difficult lot for anything to work in there. Uh, I'm glad we finally got zoning involved uh, at this point. Uh, we've gone through at least three, two meetings and a couple of continuations to finally get zoning to get a look at it uh, so you folks can do what the zoning board is here for. And what it's here for is to make exceptions at times so that things can go in. But um, I want to thank everybody that was on tonight. All the points were were all good points. One point I wanted to make out um, is that not this year coming up, but 2023, we'll be doing some more work on C Street via the state from Ginger Betty's down to Palmer. So that we are having talks about the intersection there at Ginger Betty's and at the convenience store with the hockey rink. Uh, so that might help if this does happen with whatever the structure is, this might help with um, um, the turnarounds and slowing the traffic down at that point. If someone goes out of uh, either this location or Fox or Hounds or the apartment houses uh, that are also very active uh, and go right first. Uh, it might might help a little bit in that area. But uh, that's all I wanted to say, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you guys for taking the time tonight to listen to everybody. Appreciate it. Councilor Mahoney. Thank you very much. Um, so... I'm here to speak against this. I'm just going to say straight out, and and I'm I'm a little disappointed because I'm not sure if Council McCarthy was for or against it, but in the newspaper he was very much against it. So I'm a little confused as to where he stands for this. But for me, I'm I'm against this project, and I'm going to go through the reasons why. And I'm going to ask this board to to really hold true to what you're supposed to be doing. And I don't mean that as a threat. I just mean that you know hardships are supposed to be set as to why you need to do this. And this is a residential B. So they can have multi units, but they have to have 4,500 square feet in these units. So if you do the math, their proposed spot, the lot is 20, 27,597 square feet divided by 4,500 is the, the area per dwelling unit. And that means you can have six, well, that's six units. That's their right. And when you started this conversation at the beginning, it was zoning is there because all the lots are not the same, which is true, but there's, there's math that actually works to zoning. And that's what the math is. So 27,000 square feet divided by 4,500, you can build by right six units on this lot. Not six units per floor, six units period. Now, if you meet the zoning for, for your capacity for parking, it is 2.25. And I would recommend that we look that up, but it's 2.25 per dwelling. Two, two spaces per dwelling plus 0.25 for a guest space. That gets you to 45, not 44, 45. If you don't get to say if it's a one bedroom, you get one space. It's per dwelling. That's how it's written. That's how the zoning code is written. And those are the codes that we have to up, that uphold. So we need a variance for zoning. If you meet the parking requirements for zoning, then you can actually, you could actually drop it down to uh, a density issue, which, you know, that would bring it down to um, 4,050 4, square feet per dwelling. So now you can have 6.81 units by right, but we don't have that. They're asking for 20. And as Mr. Sauter said, they were asking, you know, for 34 at the beginning, and now they look like heroes because they're coming down to 20. You want to do six, you can do it. If you want to do eight, maybe the neighbors might want it, but you have over 400 neighbors telling you that you don't want it. 
And that is something that we're supposed to listen to because those neighbors are the taxpayers, current taxpayers in the city of Quincy. So we also asked this question that anything over three units is supposed to go before the planning board, before it comes to zoning. I've been to many zoning boards where this has been kicked back saying, has planning looked at this? And it didn't go to planning. That question got brought up in a public meeting and they said that doesn't always happen. They actually quoted a unit that happened. It's by me. The unit is by me that it happened. It was on Willard Street next to the highway. It has four units, four houses across the street. They got the approval for the four houses. It skipped planning and it went to zoning. So I'm not sure why we have a planning board if we're not going to follow us. I realize it's not state law, but those are the rules that we put in play here in Quincy. And we have no we've, council. I've, I've asked we've this. Changed. I, we've I changed. Don't mean to I don't mean to interrupt you. We, I've asked this. You've heard me ask this at meetings before. Mm -hmm. I've asked this numerous times, and I and I did ask this question earlier tonight. We have mm -hmm. nothing in our municipal guidelines that states that the plan is to go to zone uh, planning first and then zoning. It doesn't say anything about the size of project. I've, I've asked this so many times. I wish, I wish as a body that that somebody would address it and say what the process specifically should be. But we, as a city, do not have a process today in place. They put the process together and they put the planning board together, and most of them do go before planning. So, but this is a really funny one, Mr. Riddell, and I'm just going to state this as a record. It's a very strange one. So, as we all know, the city solicitor is uh, is a is a is a is a is a investor in this unit. That's the best I can say. He's an investor in this unit, so he knows the rules. And he went and he had a sidebar conversation. Now he's in front of you. He puts everybody in a very awkward position is what I'm trying to say. And I can say that because he is on record as the person, as the financier behind this. Second to that, we now have a traffic person that's here. I've never seen traffic from before zoning, but that's nice. But, but you can't talk about schools, but we can talk about traffic. And then we can start talking about putting stipulations that will go back into planning and zoning so that planning can say, maybe you can take a right-hand turn Maybe we can have a policeman, too, because this is a special development that will be right outside of this development to make sure that people don't get killed when they go out into that uh, into take that left hand turn. But those are other things. Green space. Green space. They have a thousand square feet, a thousand. They're looking for 300. So it's a third. Everything is a third more or less than what is required by zoning. You know, not double a third. And it's they're asking for a lot. You have. A serious amount of people who have been on this call, more than I've ever seen before for one project, 400 signatures telling you that this is something the neighborhoods do not want. And honestly, if it goes to land court, which you don't want to hear, but if it gets approved and went to land court, they'll lose. But the thing is, the zoning board has to stand up and say, this is not the right development. And the, and the idea, the traffic, the traffic engineer said at maximum capacity, the restaurant had 350 cars going in. The, the restaurant closed in 2017, I think. I think that's what was told to us when we had the, the planning, the, the, the public meeting. And the restaurant has never been at maximum capacity. And the idea of saying it could be a Chick-fil-A or it could be something else, well, it could be a lot of things, but it shouldn't be this. That's what I can tell you. It should not be 20 units. It should not be just handed off to people just because it can be, because that's what the zoning board has to take a look at. And just so you know, when it comes to hardship, capitalism is a hardship. Making the most out of a specific investment that you have isn't a hardship. And I would like to also mention for the record, and although I really do appreciate that we had a traffic engineer here, he is the former traffic plan, traffic planning person from the city of Quincy who worked underneath the Sheets administration and the Coke administration and worked alongside city solicitor Jim Timmons. So I would think for the appearances of optics that maybe, maybe we could go outside of the circle that we're all standing in here right now. Because when we say that the neighborhood or anybody else is being rude to the developer, then I think we have to look at what the developer and the investors are doing to the city of Quincy. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments, Councillor. I will say uh, you, we have had uh, uh, Mr. Gillen in front of us numerous times on many different projects, usually large projects. There is a traffic study involved in, in the zoning board uh, appeals uh, We've, we've asked for it, we've received it. So I don't think there's any impropriety there about having a traffic study done for this. So I, I do see some people that spoke previously asked, asked to uh, speak again. Um, in the interest of time, I'll give, you, I'll give you two quick seconds here, but you know, please don't reiterate anything that you've already said. Typically we don't allow it. So I'm just, uh, just gonna let you, you, you jump on there. Uh, Sherry Ann, if, if you wanna add anything, 
I thank you. I just want to make one more comment. Um, I am deeply disappointed that Dave McCarthy does not appear to be making a full um, opposition. Yes, ma'am, that, that you, you, With knowing that this is his ward and we have spoken so loudly. You, so you, if, he, if he wants to say something else that would be more clear, that would be appreciated. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Jacobs. I just wanted to say one other thing about what uh, kind of the parliamentary issue that's going on here about what comes first. You know, I served on the Quincy Historic Commission for many years. And, you know, this is a problem, Mr. Riddell. Like, I, I do think, you know, and I, I don't know who decides how these things go first or what comes first. But um, I, there were so many cases that came before the Historic Commission that we were like, oh, we just passed it because, oh, ZBA said it was OK. Or planning already said it was OK. And I feel like everyone just passes the buck. And I don't know who decides that if it comes from the mayor's office, it comes from the city council. But if it is the city council, we have two city councils on here right now. This is of the utmost importance. There needs to be a chain of what goes first, what goes second. It's in the best interest of the city council. It's in the best interest of these boards and it's in the best interest of the taxpayer. And and I and if it is the city council or some of the executive branch, I suggest that we move forward to the, with this as soon as possible. Appreciate it. I, I've, 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 it, these board members have heard me bring it up. It, 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 yeah. it, there is no, there is nothing that says where, where one applicant has to go. So <laughs> I, we, I, we, I brought it up numerous times. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. We live in a democracy and that can all be changed. I don't disagree. <laughs> and, uh, I, I did see somebody try to sneak in on the chat and, and, and have something to say. Is there a, uh, a Zach a, Egan, Mr. Chairman, a Zach Egan. Raise your hand. Yes. Good. Good evening. And uh, All right, we got you. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Sort oh, hold, of on. Truth. hold on. Hold on. Do you, you, know, do, you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. And, uh, Zach, Zachary Egan, 12 Cherry Street in Quincy. Um, can't quite speak to the passion of the Marymount folk um, speaking from South, but you know, um, fighting the rest of the you know, South Shore up the good old Southern Artery, uh, past the police station, um, not just in the morning rush these days, but anytime, you know, that the Popeye's chicken is um, in full business. Uh, I, I still scratch my head on, on how that came to be and, and wonder if something at that intersection could be even half as bad as that Popeye's chicken would would super bother me as a Marymount resident. And, um, you know, I this is my first meeting. It's been very educational. I've been enjoying it. And um, forgive me if this is, you know, shade at all, but if I did like seeing that there was some traffic representation here and um, I, I would like to see that continue to go on uh, going forward with projects such as this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right. Thank you everyone for your comments. So, uh, you know, board members is uh, thoughts or, or actually I should applicant Chris Carroll. Where are you here? I know. Chris and Chris. Correct. Yep. Um, sorry, I'd just like to clear one thing up first. Um, I didn't mean to come off disrespectful at all in my opening statement. Uh, I think the exact phrases I used were received a lot of excellent feedback from the neighbors. The neighbors offered honest criticisms that we took into account. Uh, I did mention a couple folks, and it's just based off of stuff that's been said online. And I have friends in the neighborhood that have mentioned things that have been said about the project. So, again, I didn't mean to come off disrespectful, um, and I apologize that I did. I'd, I'd like to close it out if I could. Uh, first off, I attended all the meetings, neighborhood meetings, and I've heard. And I've been in my career at a lot of neighborhood meetings. And I have to admit, every time I left this meeting, I found like I had met a group, good group of people. They were friendly, they interacted, and they were respectful. And that's the way I looked at this, uh, these meetings. They were informational. I got a lot of input. We passed it along. And I think we brought together a project that has a lot of merit and benefits this particular area. So I, I, I want to go on record. But to wrap it up, 
Um, we heard a lot about, you know, uh, I wrote a memorandum at the beginning of this application. It, it was a while ago, but I just wanted to tell you that, you know, this project is, a, is appropriate, but dimensional relief requested for the following reasons. First, the units will be sold as condominiums, allowing for home ownership opportunity within easy walking of the Quincy Center, an area that is now predominantly rental. Virtually every housing development now proposed for Quincy Center is rental. Um, this making a condominium project uh, particularly appropriate for support. Second, the locus is very extraordinary. If you walk in the area or if you drive in the area, it's, it's unique for residence B location. The abutted to the right is a secured, fenced-in federal naval reserve facility, a paved parking area just over 50 feet wide to the building on the, on the other side of the locus. A, sim a similar parking lot is the same dimensional, separates the butter to the right, a restaurant located uh, more than 60 feet from the location. Thus, the existing, uh, there exists substantial separation between the proposed structure and the abutting structures. Um, in the like manner, Wollaston Cemetery is directly across from the locus. This vast open space essentially means that there will be no disturbance to residents across this, uh, from the locus, a typical factor the board must normally address in a residential B matter. Finally, in the rear of the lot of the land owned by the United States, there's an adjacent uh, U.S. Navy Reserve site with the Broad Meadow Salt Marsh and Town River Berlin. Thus, the entirety of the site is such that either abutting residents do not exist, cemetery and salt marsh, or the abutting parcels, a restaurant and a United States Navy Reserve site are more than 50 feet uh, from this locus. So, Again, I want to thank everybody for their time, their input, and uh, their professionalism during this process. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. I did. Uh, I did uh, fail to to note that we did see receive seventeen letters. Was it seventeen, Noreen? I think it was seventeen, 17. letters in opposition, as well as we did receive um, a repository of a number of names um, and addresses one of a portion of which were just kind of in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so we are adding all that to the record, but the Excel spreadsheet with just names, unfortunately that doesn't qualify. They would need to be signatures or they would need to be written out. Um, so I don't know whoever submitted those. I think they might've came from you, Mr. Jacobs, um, but we would need to see those uh, direct signatures. And I know that might be an issue with COVID and that might have been why it happened, but there's plenty of others here in opposed. Uh, there's a number of them. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I made note of that. So, um, and I also, again, I, I, I didn't call um, the opposition closed. So any other um, notes of opposition or people opposed, first call, second call, third call. All right, call that part of hearing closed. All right, board members. Interesting uh, take tonight. I think, uh, you know, from my perspective coming in here, I, um, you know, again, I, I view every site independently of the next. Um, I try and, and, and really, um, it look, my, my neighbor's house is very different than my house. My, you know, around the corner for me is very different than my street. So I just, I, I know we draw these maps of, of, of you know, uh, these zoning maps and, and they're blanketed with, with certain areas. And I just don't view that each lot can be, you know, one and the same. I view across the street, extraordinarily different from, from this side of the street. I mean, next door, there's two 50 plus unit buildings with no deeded parking. Um, and I, and you know, I mean, I, I've never heard a complaint. I, I did go and, and try and do some due diligence to find out if there is a number of complaints on, you know, parking on side streets because of those two buildings and I haven't found any take on it. Um, that being said, I, I also don't want to, you know, ignore the will of, of, of you know, a neighborhood. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of torn here. I wish there was, uh, you know, some better communication, but I'd love to hear what, what you guys have to say and your take on it. So Mr. O'Brien. Um, yeah, I agree. There's a couple of things that trouble me. Well, not trouble me, but I think, I think we're squeezing a little too much in there. Traffic is an issue for me. 
and also the neighborhood opposition. I can't recall sitting in a zoning board meeting for the last five or six years that have had so much opposition to a project, unified opposition. So um, I'd like to see planning take a look at this before we make any additional moves to, to allow anything to happen, to see if they could tweak some of these issues that the people are having, um, be it the parking issue, the height, whatever it is that they seem to have. Um, that, that's where I stand at this, this moment. Mr. Chin. I'm, I'm uh, familiar with this location because I worked in that restaurant for probably 10 or 12 <laughs> years, <laughs> longer than I care to remember. And so you know, I'm very familiar with the, the traffic pattern and so forth. Um, and it is a very unusual shaped lot. Um, traffic has increased since I was working there. Um, traffic is a lot faster and it's a lot denser. I don't, I, I draw a distinction in my mind between that side of C Street and the other side of C Street where the Marymount neighborhood proper truly is in my mind. Um, however, I am mindful of the fact that they would be affected by what is built on this site. My concern, like what you've heard tonight, is about the traffic and the safety. And so while I can imagine a residential structure going in there with multiple units, my concern would be that it would be a reasonable number of units such that safety was well considered. And I don't envision people taking the left to go south very easily at virtually any time of day from that spot. So for that matter, I, you know, I, I would like to see planning step in, give us their opinion. Um, but at this point in time, I would, I would not be voting in favor of this project at its current size based on the safety issues and the neighborhood opposition. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hamill. Well, the lot certainly has challenges. Um, we have to be cognizant that it was brought up that Grumpy Whites at some point is going to be developed. So I'd hate to set a precedent that's going to be, you know, two overbuilt lots. I mean, 15 years ago, picking food up there, trying to take a left was terrible. Uh, the traffic is, you know, multiplied fourfold since then. Looking at it, something eventually is going to have to go in there. A dark building is not good for anybody. It's not good for their neighborhood. It's not good for the city. Uh, having said that, uh, I think Charlie brought up that, that I don't recall having seen this much participation in the neighborhood against, totally against the project um, and reasonably opposed to it as well. So I, I would not be in favor as this is currently presented. Thank you, Mr. Hamill. Mr. Frankel. Yeah, um, yeah it's, a, it's a difficult one, that's for sure. John Rodefell's point is well taken, if not this or something like this. What is going to go into go onto that lot that's going to not cause a problem? I don't know the answer, but that's really not my problem to figure out. Uh, I think that you, even a no left turn, that just, unless you're going to sit a cop police officer down at the Ginger Betty's and just keep ticketing to make money for the city, people are going to do it. It's the only thing they can do. And that causes a problem. You've got a traffic problem now trying to get into the DPW is impossible. Um, the parking, I think, is wholly insufficient. It, there's going to be parking at Fox and Hounds. There's going to be par parking in the cemetery. I think there's going to be parking across the street in the neighborhood. And probably some people brazen enough to park in the police station or the DPW. Uh, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know what, what makes it good. I think it is against the public good, as I think it does increase the potential for accidents, personal injury, it's already there. Realistically, the only thing that sort of works in my mind, and I forget what gentleman brought it up, was to find an egress out the back. If 
by the hockey rink, or and I I don't know the real reality of that. Attorney Carroll is much more experienced than I, and I'm guessing he probably looked into it, but I don't know if he did or he didn't. That would certainly take away a lot of the objection that's out there, and I, I do think it's a big project for the parcel and the location. So I also agree I would like to see this run from planning and see what the planning department says, and then if they need zoning variances, then they come to us and we make the decision. But if it's going to a vote, I would be against it as well. Thank you, Mr. Frankel. So, Mr. Carroll, counselor, hold on, hold on. We got to unmute you, counselor. There you go. I, Sounds like you got Good it. evening. I think the point made that head to site plan review at the planning board, get their input, and then back to zoning, I think is an excellent point, and we'd ask that that be considered. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, the, the planning board is going to have their own opinion of, of, of what they feel. But I think, you know, you and your applicant heard a lot from your neighborhood and as well as the board members here that, you know, density might be an issue here. So, um, you know, take that take that into note as well. Um, or I'd ask you to take it into note as well. Um, and, uh, you know, so what do we just continue with no date right now or continue with no date sir and you can ask the applicant what they suggest okay yeah do you have are you on the planning board's calendar right now not presently but what i'd gladly do is if you gave us a date sir and then i'd update everyone in a timely fashion of where we stood so if we need extra time um yeah no yeah that's fine right. okay i mean so you'd probably even just to get it on their calendar would be february right Correct. Before February. March, March or last week of March or first week of April would be kind of when you'd probably at the earliest be going through planning. Let, let's shoot for the last week of March and I, I'll gladly keep everyone in the loop. Well, I, I will. And uh, Charlie, I'll have you read that out. I just want to I just want to take a note, just a moment, just to thank everybody for for their time. We are going to hear other cases tonight. So so uh, I. I appreciate everybody being patient with us, um, but I wanted to thank all the people who are here for this case. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your input. Thank you for your participation. And uh, and zoning zoning will not hear this again until at least March 22nd. What is it? That's March 8th. March 22nd. Oh, my. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I don't think you'll be on before. I mean, you'd be the last week. What planning would be second week of February? If they started now, they could get on probably. For the second. February. Yeah. And then, we'll plan so, on that day. Yeah, let's well, just let's just let's just give them more time. Uh, you know, just I'd rather give it to the two more weeks than having to reschedule attorney Carroll. So uh, I try not to make these people come out again. For Absolutely. A, I'd rather just you know advertise it once and and uh, and you know go from that point. Thank you all. Thank so, you. Uh, Thank you. Charlie, can I have a motion, please? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Regarding zoning board case 21-75, JVC C Street LLC for variance to demolish the existing building and construct a new 24 unit residential building with parking under on the premises numbered 105 C Street. I make a motion to move the um, hearing to March 22nd of the year 2022. Thank you. We have a roll call. Charlie O'Brien? Yes, ma'am. Russell Chin? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Jeff Frankel? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Yes. And uh, we're just gonna we're gonna take a quick five minute bathroom break here for our board members. And uh, we do we we do have uh, two more cases coming up. Oh and three more cases. Yeah. yeah, three more cases. So uh, if you're on for one of those cases, we'll be we'll be right back and Five minutes.
everybody got stuck with the longest night of zoning board ever. <laughs> Welcome back, Jeff. Hey, that was uh, that was that's that's an interesting problem. Charlie, John, and we just need Russell. <laughs> Yeah, back. Perfect. Recording in progress. All right, so we are back. Um, we are going to go with uh, case number ZBA 2190, Michael Bascom for trustee of DGB Trust for finding variants to renovate and convert the existing two large residential units into four smaller units by splitting the large single unit on the second floor into two smaller units and by separating the third floor from the second, converting the third floor into a separate unit on the premises numbered 32 Spear Street. Is there applicant or their representative here? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, Edward Fleming here on behalf of Michael Bascom, uh, the appl applicant in this matter. Uh, as you indicated, this is uh, involving uh, 32 Spear Street. 32 Spear Street is a large uh, two family home on the corner of Spear and uh, Franklin Street. Um, and near the uh, YMCA, um, very close proximity to Quincy, um, Quincy High School and, uh, and also um, the planning board or the planning department. Um, this is a large two family unit. Mr. Baskin's owned this property. He's uh, joined me tonight as well. Uh, he's owned this property for a number of years. Um, the difficulty in renting this building has been for the always a problem for Mr. Baskin is that the units are very large in size. Uh, especially the second floor, the second floor of the building. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may uh, share my screen uh, so that I can share the location of the site and also the, um, the, the plans. John, you got it? He's all set to share, go ahead. Thank you, sir. So um, uh, this, this shows the site plan as it's located, as I indicated, I'm sorry, on the corner of Spear and Francis Street. Uh, the property is very large in size. It, it encompasses almost the entire lot. Uh, there's a, uh, it's serviced by a, a two car garage uh, that provides two cars, uh, two parking spaces under the building and also in a, a two additional spaces within the, the driveway of the location. Um, let me see if I can... Uh, Pull up my other plans here. Uh, nope. Uh, can I, can I you see the plans here now? I think, when you, I think when you click back, you might have stopped sharing the screen. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, Here we go. So much easier with the easel, right? It's it's easier with my kids here, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, this just to be able to walk you through the plan. So this is the uh, the the first floor level. As you can see, the building has a, a two car garage with two vehicles under the building and, and two additional vehicles in the rear. This is showing the first floor lo level. Um, right now, the first floor is located in, in re uh, resided um, uh, by a family, uh, a woman and her two children. They live, they, they utilize the MBTA on a regular basis, and, and she does not own a vehicle. Um, the, there'll be no changes made to the first floor of the building. As I walk to the second floor of the building, you can see the size of the second floor. This second floor, which is one unit, en encompasses the entire floor, second floor of the building. And as you can see, there are four bedrooms with an additional room that's that's called the dining area, but it's actually separated by a doorway and it actually uh, creates a fifth bedroom. And what Mr. Bascom's found is that because of the large size of that unit, um, which is, by the way, combined with the third floor level as well, which has additional uh, space that provides for significant living area um, and including additional bedrooms um, is that he's approached by a number of different um, parties that want to rent this by 
five or six or seven different individuals to live in one particular unit. And what that causes is problems with the rooming house violations. Uh, so what he's so Mr. Bascom's limited to to utilizing this second uh, floor location, which is a huge um, a huge unit, uh, as one large apartment, both in the second and the third floor level. Um, and, it, and he's he's struggled to avoid any violations of the rooming house violations because the rooming house uh, provisions indicate that if, if you cannot rent to four or more unrelated parties. Uh, and he's, as I indicated, he's often approached by much larger parties than that. Um, and they are cause, causing those kind of difficulties. To be honest with you, this house is probably almost best suited as it's designed for a social service agency or a rooming house, which Mr. Bascom doesn't necessarily want to use this property for. So as a result of that, what, what Mr. Bascom is seeking to do is, is leave the first unit alone as a two bedroom, um, bed, two bedroom unit, a family style unit, uh, take the second floor and change it from one large, one large building, which encompasses the entire building to two separate units. And those two separate units will be divided right in the middle of the building it will this particular unit on the on the right side of the property will provide for two bedrooms a living area a dining room and kitchen and the in the second unit on that same floor will be reduced in size to a three bedroom with a living room and a a, a dining area and kitchen as well uh, and he would then like to separate the large third floor unit into a separate dwelling unit um, and create the appropriate stairway for that unit so that that unit will have the same stairway that will go up to the third floor and then create a two bedroom unit on the, on the third floor level. It will not in any way increase the capacity of the building because I, as I indicated, the, the units were so large that they were being attract, they were attracting large parties. This will actually just create a better opportunity to create more uh, modest size in, in ease, more easily rentable uh, dwelling units um, uh, in this particular building. Um, the building exists as it is today. There's very little he can do. And the, as I indicated, the only other approach to better utilize this building would be to a social service agency or a rooming house. And we think that this is a better use of the property. It's in very close proximity to the MBTA and the, in the Quincy Center Zoning District. Uh, folks can walk from this area to the MBTA to utilize the, the train for public transportation. We think this is a much better use of the property and will not increase the capacity of the building in any manner. So um, to do so, um, and I spoke with uh, Mr. Duca about this proposal before, to do so we're seeking a finding to simply allow this modification of this building to, to, um, to eliminate, the, to create, um, to go from two units, I mean, so from four units, to, um, I mean, sorry, sorry, from two large units to, to, to four more um, reasonably um, suited units. We think it's a much better use of the property. It will attract young professionals to the area uh, that you will use, that will be a, a great uh, neighbors to the um, existing neighborhood. So that's our, pro our proposal tonight. Thank you, Godzilla. And by the way, we, we, had, a, we had a neighborhood meeting with, uh, with um, Councillor uh, Phelan, actually, uh, Councillor Phelan actually represents this district, um, and he he sent notice uh, to the entire neighborhood, and, and one neighbor appeared uh, at that meeting. We had a very cordial and nice uh, meeting with him. Uh, he, in fact, was very close with the woman who lives on the first floor, whose children, by the way, play in the in the little yard right out front, um, and we'd like to maintain and kind of utilize that yard so that the first floor unit will have that yard available to them. But no other no other opposition or, or concerns were raised. Thank you, thank, thank you, Councillor. I was just reading uh, Councillor Phelan's note on it. Um, is there any uh, any comments from the board? Any questions? Uh, at this point, I'm 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 good. I understand what they're trying to do. Thank you, Mr. Chen. No, I have no questions. Mr. Hamill. You're back on mute. Yes, you need questions? I'll come back to you. The 
does the third floor require a uh, second wave egress? Does the third do Yeah, those are, those are questions that, are, that we're certainly going to have to review building code uh, regulations with um, with Mr. Duca to ensure that there's all any kind of building um, code steps are, are taken care of. You can have one exit according to Jay with okay. the sprinkler system, but the, and the sprinkler system would be mandated based on the number of units. Um, all right, thank you. Well, potentially mandated based on the number of units. I mean, oh, it needs a sprinkler system, but he'd have to look at the th means of egress. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Frankel? No questions at this point. All right, any of uh, those in favor? Raise your hand or star nine. First call, second call. Citizen you said you weren't going to speak, Citizen Rotafeld. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Where's my Christmas present, John? You Now you better send it to my house. What do you got, John? No, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just in favor of this because I feel bad about all the crazy development that has been done on, C on Spare Street. So, I mean, this, this is just a landlord that's been there forever just trying to make things work and adjusting to how the um, society is. So, I mean, I think that makes sense. It's going to be four units. I mean... Parking is going to be a stretch, but that's um, up to you guys to approve it. Thank you. But I'm Thank, you. Thank you, John. <coughs> Joshin. Need to unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself now. Hold yeah, on, you, you got to take an oath real quick. Uh, Joshin, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Is that me, Josephine? Yeah. It came in funny. Sorry. Yeah. Josephine. I can understand. Huh? Uh, I, I like the idea because can you, I do. Can you, sorry. Sorry. Can I just, can you state your name and address for the record, I'm, please? I'm sorry. My name is Josephine Oliverti. I live at 16 Adele Street, Quincy, but we own the 34, uh, 35 Spear, and okay. we also own 42 Street, the two family. Okay. okay, thank you. Oh, okay, so Michael, I like the idea because, like I said, there's been a lot of issues on Spear Street with a lot of buildings being wanted to be built up there, four or five units, 30 side, 35 units, and all that, which would be too much for the area. I like the idea of what he's doing. I think that's the best way, not a rooming house or anything. It's fine with us. We agree with it. My okay. only question is uh, if you build a third floor do you have to have an entrance uh, two entrances one to get in and one to get out i don't know if you heard uh, mr o'brien just asked the same question or somebody on the board just sorry if it wasn't you child uh, it's long long night um but uh we did just ask the same question that would be up to the building inspector if this is approved uh he would have to look at the plans fully and and, and determine if he needed a third floor egress a second egress for the third floor. So that's all part of building code. It, it's mandated by the state. So it, it it wouldn't be something we'd decide here tonight. Yeah, I was only asking that because we do have a third floor in our two. And I was just wondering, I always thought you have to have an entrance and a place to get out in case of fire or something. Okay. Well, if you call inspectional services, I'm sure they can point you in the right direction. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that that's fine. That that is the best way to go for that area, and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. For you. Finally, I'm happy about something. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Um, anyone else in favor? First call, second call, call that party here and closed. Um, I do have a letter from the DPW. We have reviewed the submittal for the above reference project and have no comments. Also received a note from the counselor um, who did say he was he did hold the neighborhood meeting. Um, the only issue that came up was parking, um, but that there was only one resident at the meeting and no other comments were made. Um, anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? Josephine, you have a hand up again? 
Yeah, for the wrong yeah. reason, because I kept hearing that sound and had a meeting. And unfortunately, we never know about these meetings. So they this would be, they would, we, we notify every direct abutter within 300 feet. So do you, if, you might want to check your mailing address with the city of Quincy and make sure that it's correct because uh, it was, it was notified with, with every abutter. Um, and, and, and you might, it might just have like a, a different mailing address for you. And, and that's why you're not receiving notifications. I don't know, but they send the tax bill to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> so they know that. Touche, touche. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not in charge of that process. I'd like to tell you that uh, I, I know exactly how it is, but I have the utmost faith in our clerk who always does notify everyone. So I just don't know if, uh, why, they, why you didn't receive, and I apologize. But, but thank Honest you. to God. I never do. But thankfully, you found out about this one tonight. So, but uh, yeah, they know my address for the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, anyone else opposed or undecided? Second call, third call, call that a part of the hearing close. Um, I'd be in favor. Um, I think it's a better use of walking distance to the train. Uh, I agree. You're just the only people you're going to rent it to are going to have that many people in the places, anyways. Yeah. Uh, why not? Why not split it up and get get uh, a better direct participation and a safer building too, as a sprinkler system will be required going forward. So, um, I'd be in favor. Charlie, I agree. Mr. Chen, yep. for all the reasons you just mentioned, I agree. Mr. Frankel, I agree. Mr. Hamill, agreed. All right. Can I have a motion, Charlie? Mr. Chairman, regarding case, hold on one second, Hannah, I catch up. ZBA 2190. ZBA 2190, Michael E. Bascom, trustee of the DGB Trust, for a finding variance to renovate and convert the existing two large residential units into four smaller units by splitting the large single unit on the second floor into two smaller units, and by separating the third floor from the second floor unit and converting the third floor into a separate unit on the premises number 32 Spear Street, I make a motion to grant the requested findings and variance. Second. Second. Roll call, please, yes. Madam Clark. Charlie O'Brien? Yes, ma'am. Russell Chin? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Jeff Frankel? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you, Councilor. Happy holidays. You too. Uh, next up, ZBA 2191, JCBT architect for a variance to convert an existing single family one and a half story home into a two and a half story duplex with two and a half story rear addition with proposed curb cut and driveway on the right yard and five to six parking spaces on the premise numbered 114 Curtis Avenue. Is the applicant or their representative here? Yep, I'm here. How you doing, Jim? Good evening. Do I need to be sworn in? You do, I believe, unless you're a counselor. Nope, I'm not. Uh, Mr. Chen, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now I'm hearing? I do. Thank Lord, you, Mr. Name and uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Jim Chen. I'm the architect representing um, the property owner, Bao Trin, tonight uh, for his property at 114 Curtis Avenue. Curtis Avenue is currently a single family um, residence, um, sits on a 6,000 square feet lot area uh, located in a Res B zoning district. So uh, multifamily would be in compliance. Uh, so we were requesting to add an additional unit onto the, uh, the property. Um, currently it's a one-story one building and we're requesting to have a two, two and a half story uh, with a total square footage of uh, approximately 2,930 square feet. Um, the addition is actually at the, re at the rear of the property. If I may uh, share my screen, please. Yeah, sure. John, you got it? Should be good to share, go ahead. Awesome, thank you. So existing footprint of the building is in this area, which is about 1,000 um, 
eight square feet. And the, uh, the addition to, toward the back is about 20, 20 feet by 23 feet area. Um, we're setting back 10 feet from the property line on the left side and uh, 25 feet at the rear to, to the edge of the building. But uh, there's an additional of, um, six feet of deck area in the back. Uh, the rear setback to the deck is 19 uh, feet. On the right side, uh, we'll be proposing to get a 10 feet curb cut from the street to provide uh, four additional parking uh, to the right side. Currently on the left side, there's a um, they, they park two parking spaces here. And then uh, at the back in this area here, you used to be, there is a, a one, um, one car garage, which will be removed uh, for this addition. So each store, uh, each unit will consist of a uh, three bedroom and two bath. Um, which uh, it's a, uh, each unit is approximately uh, close to uh, about 1,500 square feet. So we're requesting a variance for uh, maximum FAR floor area. We're slightly exceeding the requirement of um, 0.4. We're at 0.49. And then uh, since we're adding a front deck, a sort of a covered porch to the front of the house, to give it a, a better aesthetic uh, looking house. Uh, we're we're Ken, requesting a variance for that too. Before I uh, before I have you go through this whole thing, uh, Mr. Frankel just just alerted us that he's done uh, some legal work in the past for your for your client. Okay. So he would be unable to vote on this. Um, so that means you'd need 100% of the four people that are here. We can certainly hear it tonight, and and if and and have the four of us vote on it, or you can wait until um, our other two members are, are in and are present and we can get a full five member board. It's, it's entirely up to you. I think we can move forward. Okay. And um, what I was saying, the, um, the, the rear yard set, the rear yard setback is actually in compliance uh, to, to the face of the building, but we're adding a, a six feet deck there. Therefore we're requesting a, uh, a variance for the rear yard of 19. Okay. Um, but the parking is in compliance, number of stories in compliance, uh, all other dimensional is in compliance except for the front rear yard and the FA yard. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, any questions from any of the board members at this time? Yeah, very quickly, Jim, you, is this going to be six bedrooms in total? Six bedroom in total, correct. Thank you. Any additional questions, Charlie? Uh, no, I'm good for right now. I uh, look at the size of it, but okay. No questions at this time. Russ? Jim, you're going to take down that big tree in the front yard there, I assume, right? Yes, yeah, so there's a, uh, a big tree in the front um, that will, will need to be removed for the parking. No other questions right now. Okay. Uh, anybody who would like to speak in favor? Raise your hand, star nine, wave at us. First call, second call, third call closed. Anything from DPW? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so DPW, we've reviewed the above submittal for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the existing site conditions, layout of utility, grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Four, will there be any change of grade due to the development? Five, upon completion of the project, as built plan showing all utility utilities and building footprints need to be submitted along with a digital file. Opposition, any of those imposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? First call. We have Council Andronico followed by uh, Terry Sullivan. 
Let's go to Terry first. We'll like leave Councillor for after everybody's comments. Hi, Terry Sullivan, 108 Curtis Ave. Hold on, Ms. Sullivan. We just got to ask you to get sworn in, please. Sure. Ms. Sullivan, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Yes, I do. Thank you. The floor is yours. So I oppose this. I grew up on Curtis Ave at 120. My parents are the abutting neighbors. Um, so the traffic right now on Curtis Ave and Washington Court has been a nightmare. And I just think this is going to add to the problem that we already have here with Pagnano Towers. Uh, I think it's going to cause a lot of congestion in the area. And we are proposing that this does not take place. I think it has Thank negative effects on our neighborhood. And we're going to lose two more parking spots on Curtis Ave where it's already a mess. Thank you for your comments. I did. We did receive your letter. I was going to read it in, but uh, it sounds like you hit on all the points that I'm just looking it over. Um, you hit on all the all the points on there. Um, I see guest. Uh, I don't know who guest is, but can we unmute guest? Good. There we go. Hi, my Hold name. Up. Oh, sorry. You can swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing. Yes, I do. Thank you. Just your name and address for the record, please. My name is Carolyn Cronin. I'm speaking on behalf of 120 Curtis Ave, which abuts this project. I grew up in that home, and my parents have lived at that address for over 40 years. Um, we'd like to see them continue, stay, and live there. But we do oppose this project for many reasons, but the most um, highest one is the traffic. It would take away, it looks like, two spots on Curtis Ave, which is right across from the Pegnano Towers. And the parking on that street is a huge issue. You have visiting nurses and guests that come to Pegnano Towers, and they can't park in the parking lot because they don't have stickers, so they have to park out on the street. Uh, there's a restaurant in the neighborhood. People are parking on Washington Court. It's very difficult to get up and down that street. Washington Court and Curtis Ave. I see the fire trucks having difficulty getting to Pegnano Towers because of all the cars parking on Curtis Ave in Washington Court because they're at Pegnano Towers. Um, according to the drawing that we received, it looks like there's four spots on the right side of the building. And I guess my question would be, um, are those parking, is that like assigned to one unit are they both going to be sharing that driveway? Because common sense would tell you four spots won't be used up when you have people, you know, leaving at all times of day and night to go to work. If they're coming home and there's two cars already in the parking lot, they're going to park out on the street. So now you're going to even have more parking out on the street. So I, I'm curious to see how that, that goes down. But um, my other thing would be... Um, Obviously, um, you know, my parents have spent a lot of money um, in the backyard recently, and I am definitely curious about the drainage. Um, you know, we spent $10,000 in the backyard, and now we're going to have a, a driveway there, and all that rainwater is going to come into our yard. So that's our concern as well. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, I just, one other thing is, it's a very dense neighborhood, and I just don't think that the neighborhood could sustain any more rent residential development the way it is. Thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it. And LG Stylo 5. Hello? Yep, hold on, we just have to swear you in. Okay. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Your name My and address? Name is John, John Sullivan, 120 Curtis Ave. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Curtis Ave. I live right next to the house that's being done. Uh, my major concerns are the parking, which it, everybody's already gone over. And the other thing is privacy. Like uh, my sister would just spoke. We just spent a lot of money on our backyard. We had pavers put in and all that. All that extra water is going to come in our yard. And the second story, the privacy will absolutely be gone. And that's our major concern. You know, it's a, when they bought the house, it was a, it's a one house neighborhood. 
and it was a you know quiet residential area, and it, it's starting to lose that. We're definitely getting you know overcrowded down here. I think you know too much traffic. Traffic's a nightmare on Curtis Ave in front of Pagnano's. And this is only going to add to that problem. But like I said, my major concern is the privacy and the water runoff. That's all. Thank you. Appreciate your comments, Mr. Sullivan. And uh, 71413-4760. Okay. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Yes. Hi, this is uh, Steve Sullivan. I'm at 62 Rustic Drive, Weymouth, uh, Massachusetts. My parents live at 120 Curtis Ave, uh, about the uh, property that's looking for the addition. I just want to echo the comments of uh, everybody else who was opposing this. It's just the traffic is a nightmare. Um, I grew up there. My parents lived there for 45 years. It's a, it's really a single family neighborhood. Um, I do have a question. I'm not sure if the owner is going to reside there, or if it's just clearly for like a, an investment for, you know, for, for them. Um, not sure if that's something they disclose or if it's something that comes into play, but yeah, I, I definitely have concerns with the, uh, the, the traffic in, in that um, already congested area. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. And Terry, I'll, I'll let you jump back on again real quick, but please be brief. Sorry, yes. I just wanted to also say uh, Mary Ellen Loisel, she resides at 44 Washington Court. She is also in a butter to this um, house. And she had asked earlier today, she doesn't know how to use the computer, but she did say to let you know that she opposes it. I don't know if that plays into this. Yeah, we can't really read it in the record without her signature or something, but uh, you know, duly noted, I, I think that the same concerns that you have, uh, you and your, you, you know, uh, yeah. orders have, yeah. you know, I'm sure she echoes those sentiments. So, um, okay. Councilor Andronico, you want to uh, say a few words? You've been so patient and on here all night, so. <laughs> Thank you, and, and you've displayed a great deal of patience as well. So uh, thank you to the board for uh, for sticking with us, and thank you to everyone who uh, was joined on to, to speak about this project. Uh, we'd just like to reiterate some of the points uh, that have been made and to let you know that I did hear from uh, seven or eight local residents, including Mary Ellen, uh, that was just mentioned by name on Washington Court there, uh, all in opposition uh, to this project, and uh, I do agree with them. Uh, I'm opposed to this project for a few reasons. Uh, you know, when we were looking at some of the uh, traffic impacts in that neighborhood in particular, and as a counselor, some of the remedies we have uh, in order to uh, you know, remedy some of the issues includes like one side of the street parking only. Uh, Curtis Ave is already one side of the street only. Uh, it's constantly packed with cars. It's usually uh, difficult to find a space over there. It's directly across the street from Pagnano Towers, which generates a lot of traffic. And I think the overall size of this proposal uh, with two three-bedroom units uh, is simply just not right for the neighborhood. I have a, a great deal of concern um, with the, the proposal as is, and uh, I would ask that it be rejected uh, in its current form. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Opposed or undecided? Anyone else have any comments? First call, second call, third call closed. Um Mr. Chen, was there, um, is there specifically deeded spots? I know that was a question. It won't be a deeded spot. Um, I believe those will be two rental units. Um, so uh, each unit will get a two uh, tenant parking space. And then uh, the other question, any third, th 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 there's no space on that half story. Is there, is there any? Living space up there. What's that half story? No, um, the third third story is an attic, um, which will be a storage okay. for mechanical, and then the basement it will be a uh, unfinished storage. Okay. I also the, I I know that uh, some some drainage concerns were mentioned. Have you done any uh, drainage plans? Did you look at doing like some you know some crushed stone for that driveway or anything like that? Yeah, we we, we did consider Caltech systems uh, underneath. Uh, the, the, the paving area to okay. uh, alleviate some of the um, additional drainage. 
water. Okay. Mr. O'Brien, thoughts, comments, questions? Yeah, the, um, it's, it's, it's too big. Um, there's too much going on on the site, removing trees, parking cars up there and a true family. Um, I, I just think it's it's way too big for what's there and what is is surrounding it. When you look across the street at Pagnano Towers, everything else is kind of livable. Um, I'm not comfortable with it. Mr. Chin. Oh, I see that he's staying in the footprint. I see that it is Res B. I do see that there's a massive tower across the street that's probably causing some problems with parking in that area. But he is providing additional four spaces. So I, I'm a little bit torn about the project, um, but I'm mindful of the fact that the neighbors, um, you know, aren't, aren't uh, amenable to it and the councilors is against it as well. Primarily, I believe, for the parking issues. So I, I would like to know whether the um, whether the applicant would be willing to go back and talk to the neighbors and maybe maybe come up with a different proposal. Of course, yes. Mr. Hamill. I think it's too dense. It's a very dense neighborhood. I just think this would be a, a, another negative. I it, it, it's there's, there's nothing positive about this in my view. It, that getting in and out of there is terrible. So this isn't going to help it. So, uh, no, Jeff's okay, not on the case. Um, you know, Mr. Chen, you need all four of us tonight, and it sounds like you definitely don't have that. Um, so do you want to go back to the drawing board, think of something else, or do you want us to uh, kind of give you the thumbs down on this tonight? May we continue the, um, to a um, next meeting, and then we'll, we'll go back to the drawing board to reduce the size. So what do you think, uh, I mean, it's holidays and everything. Do you want to go to the end of January? Is that all right? January 25th? We have room then? Um, January 25th, yes, we can go. January 25th? Yeah, January 11th, yeah, well, anyways. So I can do, you do the 25th? I do like to meet with the uh, neighbors. Um, okay. So maybe push it back to February. February, what's the first meeting in February? Um, yeah, February 8th. February 8th? Does that work? Good. Thank Great. you, Jim. Charlie, can we have a motion? I can. Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 21-91, JCBT Architects for a Variance to convert the existing single family one and a half story home into a two and a half story duplex with a two and a half story addition with the proposed curb cut and driveway on the right yard with five to six parking places on a premises numbered 114 Curtis Avenue, Quincy. I make a motion to Reschedule a meeting for February eighth of nineteen of twenty twenty two. Second. Second. Need a roll call. Yes, please. Charlie O'Brien. Yes, ma'am. Russell Chin. Yes. Ron Himmel. Yes. Brian Riddell. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Last one. ZBA 2192, Brian Franklin for a raising for a finding, right? Left side setback finding? Finding for raising an existing garage and breezeway and adding a second story addition to the left side of the house and adding a full second story over the existing house. Yes, for variance and a finding. Is it a variance and a finding? Yeah. Variance and a finding for those. Uh, is the applicant or the representative? I see you, Mr. Franklin. Your floor is yours. Why don't you tell us what you're trying to do? How are you doing, Chairman, and uh, the board? Um, I'm pretty much trying to uh, make some more living space. We have a pretty large family, um, and according to the existing footprint, where we have a uh, we have a mudroom and a garage on the left side of the the main house, and I would like to extend that over a little bit closer to the property line. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have. Uh, Anything that's to right. put on yeah, the show, that's but right. uh, I get it. So you, so you, that that side, you, you're talking extending to the left side, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so you I, got about be, you got about I ten and a half feet on the left side today. That's what it says on the on the plot plan. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, you, and, you, and you're going to about four and a half, correct? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, and also it's um, 
I wouldn't be moving closer to a house. It's it's a uh, my neighbor's driveway, and their their house is actually on Park Ave. Um, and I've already talked to them, and um, pretty much my other neighbor that would maybe uh, you know see any effects of this. They they don't have any problem with it. Yeah, because there's that there's that driveway in between you and 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 your other and your other neighbor on Standish, correct? I am right. just I, I, I you know some of us know the property better than others, so yeah. <laughs> So you actually have a driveway that comes down. There's no, there's no house there for for the neighbor on Park Ave, and then there's the then there's the neighbor to the left of that, correct? Yes. Yeah, I don't know if if, if, if anybody knows the property, but I know it well. You um, do. <laughs> yeah. I do. Oh, yeah, Mr. Franklin lives up and around the corner. I'm at the park every day looking at Mr. Franklin's house because I got a little kid, so I no, I get it. I'm up watching Mr. Riddell down the park oh there you go <laughs> um and so and how many bedrooms are you gonna have in there uh well we ha we currently have um two but I, I, we're gonna be turning it to um four okay four beds up top all on the second yeah oh i'm sorry uh, and we'll have a, a larger living space where the garage would be so okay okay um any questions mr himmel no questions. Mr. O'Brien. Uh, no. Mr. Chin. No, kid, no. Mr. Frankel. I do not. All right. Um, anybody opposed? Uh, no. Those in favor. In sorry. Favor. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's late. I've been there on this thing for three hours. You know. <laughs> uh, can somebody, uh, Mr. Reed? Mr. Reed, you we just got to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this matter now we're hearing. I do. Yes. And just state your name and address for the record, Mr. Reed. John Reed, 110 Standish Road, Quincy. Thank you. I, um, I, I'm sitting here in favor of this project. Um, as you've already noted, the only thing it's going to encroach on is the driveway. Um, I live to the left of Brian, um, um, but don't see that this is going to be an issue at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. He's not going to mess up the garden, is he? He hadn't better. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't better. Uh, actually, Brian, I, I, I apologize. Mr. Chin, can you just swear in uh, Brian? I just thought for the record, I know he wasn't yeah. sworn in before. Uh, Show him the gas segment. This is uh, Mr. Franklin. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth in this matter um, now in hearing before the board? Yes, I do. Thank, Thank you. you. I just didn't want to, I don't know if that screws something up, Brian, but I didn't want to have to come back and find out. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, any other, those in favor, anybody else in favor? First call, second call, third call closed. Anyone opposed? Oh, I do have comments from the DPW. Uh, we've re reviewed the submittal for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the grading and drainage. And five, upon completion of this project as built plan showing all utilities, building footprints need to be submitted along with the digital file. That information will be at inspectional services for you, Brian. Uh, anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? First call, second call, third part, call close. Uh, like I, I, I you know the property well. I know Brian's family well. They definitely need the space. He's got a growing family, getting bigger and older, and uh, probably destroying his life as much as they are the house. You know, yeah. uh, in favor. I think it's it's a perfect opportunity to be able to, for him to go left. I know the house well. So, um, Mr. O'Brien. Likewise. Mr. Hamill? Likewise. Mr. Chen? I'm in favor. Mr. Frankel? I am in favor as well. Charlie, you want me to just read it because I got it in front of me and I know it wasn't on the agenda? Or did... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, case number ZBA 2192 for a variance finding for raising existing garage and breezeway and adding a second story addition to the left side of the house and adding a full second story over the existing house. 
I get a roll call? Or oh, wait, no, I have to motion to Second. approve. Thank you, Charlie. You are roll call. Charlie O'Brien. You got it. Russell Chin. Yes. John Himmel, did we lose you again? We lost your voice. No, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Uh, oh, I John Himmel. Affirmative. Thank you. Yes. Jeff Frankel. Yes. And Brian Riddell. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Thank, Thank you very much for your patience. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> that, that concludes our meeting for Tuesday, December 14th. Motion to adjourn. Happy holidays. Oh, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Yeah, Actually, nice, we're gonna come back nice job, you. Brian. Brian, I think you got a no. future at that spot. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I resigned tonight, Jeff. I resigned. Tonight's my last meeting. <laughs> Good job, Brian. Uh, yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good holiday, See you later, guys. Bye. Merry Christmas. Recording stop. Merry Christmas.